Okay, so yeah, let's just do it. Um, yeah, I'll talk about I'll talk about the tools first, I guess. Perhaps um, you've seen it. Maybe in a so dream. what? It's not really required uh, to have these, I guess. But baby jump mod is the first thing, and it's in the hitless Discord, I guess. So at least I think there's a link to it in his hitless Discord. Um, it's it's a good thing to have, you know, especially the way I do this route. I do some jumps. Um, so I, I would absolutely get it, um, for vanilla, like, which is, is a tutorial for, uh, there is a DLL you can get, or you can use cheat engine to do it. There's a few ways, but I would obviously recommend the DLL because you just put it in and forget about it. And that's what I use. So that there's that there's baby jump mod and you can just kind of search it up and you'll find it. Oh, another thing is Durazno actually, um, Durazno, it fixes the dead zones for Dark Souls. So for Dark Souls 2. So like when you're playing this game, it, it, it almost feels like when you, like if you're walking straight and you move the stick a bit to the right, like see how I'm gradually turning. If this was, if I didn't have Durazno, I actually wouldn't be turning at all here. And it's because the dead zones are like massive. So to make this game feel a lot more like, you know, DS1 and, and DS3 in terms of just unlocked movement, um, Durazno will fix this for you. Like, so the movement is much better. Highly recommend getting it. Of course, it's optional, but it's like it's legal for no hit and stuff. Same with baby jump mod. It's totally fine. And then the last thing I would recommend is um, setting up a hotkey or or like a, a controller bind to do auto sprinting. And this is probably the least necessary thing. But I find it's really nice to use auto sprint. This is all also how you can like sprint in menu in this game, right? So you see I'm sprinting, but I can like go into my menu and it's fine. Um. That's kind of the last thing, and you can bind it to kind of whatever you want. I use uh, the back button, and the way I actually do it is, uh... yeah, I'll put the links in the description, Xenomorph. Yeah, that's a good idea. The way I actually do it is, so right now I have auto sprint bound to X, um, and I use ReWASD, which is like, it's a paid software, but I use it for all kinds of stuff. It's for remapping, setting up macros, all kinds of stuff. That's what I use. So I just, I, I set it to actually the back button on the controller, so, um, like, you can't see when I press it, but, like, obviously there's a start button, and then I use the back button, and, uh, and that's what I'm using to, to do auto sprint, so it's, it's basically just hitting X for me, basically, so that's, that's all kind of the, that's, that's, like, the extra software, the tools that I'd recommend using, um, you wouldn't really, you can do a similar red on Scholar, but it'd be quite a bit different, so, yeah, we're gonna start out, um, we're gonna go explore, and of course, start the bonfire aesthetic. The idea of this route is to do four rottens, get a million soul memory, and uh, and yeah, this is probably the route I would recommend for for a consistent, safe. It's 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 decently efficient. It's definitely not as fast as you can go, but it's not too bad. It's not bad. Like you can see, we're killing dragon rider in there. That's completely optional, but I think my enter key is broken <laughs> or something. But it's not, though. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. So, yeah, we're going to start with the Explorer. Um, the reason for this is because, first of all, he starts out with uh, the Resins, which is nice. He also starts out with the um, the Urns, which is also nice. It helps speed in the early game, but it also starts with the highest uh, agility. Or maybe not the highest agility, but the highest ADP, at least. So get the most iframes at the start you get nine iframes at the start uh with the explorer so it's the highest iframes you can get at the start yeah then of course bonfire aesthetic um and then obviously create your character exactly how you create mine or else the run won't work um okay so i guess the first thing that you have a choice at is getting the stone ring and what the stone ring does is it increases your poise damage and it's probably the most useful, like, with bows. Um, like, in, especially in Shrine of Amana, is probably the, it's probably the only place where it's actually useful. But if you're going to get Stone Ring and you want to do that, you, you grab this bonfire. I actually wouldn't recommend it for vanilla any percent. If you're running Scholar, I actually would. But as you'll see, since Shrine of Amana is so much easier in, in vanilla DS2 compared to Scholar, it, it's completely unnecessary. So there, I, 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 wouldn't, I would say that there's no point in getting it, basically. <clears throat> yeah, and then we're gonna start out. We have to kill Malin. So Malin's the guy who drops the uh, Seldora set, which gives you bonus souls, which is important to get to one million. 
So this might, it actually does take a little bit of practice maybe to like get this line up, right? Oh, actually, let me get uh, some save file stuff up. All right. Oh, by the way, I guess one thing, if you're practicing DS2, that's useful to know is um, in the other games, you can kind of just go into your menu and the game will autosave for you. Like if you just did something like that in DS3, you get an autosave. In this game, if you drop an item, like so you see in the top right corner how there's the like the, the bonfire symbol, that means the game's autosaving. Or I guess it's just a flame. Um, that's, that's how you can like make saves without having to quit out or do anything like that, right? So you'd want to do that when you want to make a save. So yeah, for Malin, what you want to do is grab your Witching Urns, and this is why it's it's nice to start with this class. Um, you can start with other classes and like kill him with melee and stuff, but basically you just walk up to him, you line it up, and like you can do this fast, obviously, but you line it up and you just you throw the urns at him. All right, so you just do this. Take five urns. I guess I'll show this like little detail maybe. It's really unimportant, but if you want to be a little bit faster, um, I'll show you what you can do. You can actually headshot them on the last on the last urn if you want to like save an urn or something. It's it's really like it's something that on runs I try to do it. But if I miss, like I just throw another urn and it's no big deal. But basically you just want to aim a bit higher up if you want to get the headshot on the last hit. So I'll just show that really fast and I don't know. Just something you could do to be a little bit faster, so. Okay, it helps if you actually hit the urn properly. But anyways, I'll just show the angle that you're supposed to throw it at to get the headshot. Like, it's like that. Right, so you just aim it up a little bit. But yeah, so you get your Seldora set. Um, then we're going to come to the cat. We're going to buy, uh, we're going to buy three skulls here. These are kind of important to get. We're going to use them all kind of in the first section of the game. First section, and then I also, like, do all my menuing here, so... Actually... Um... The way I usually set up my menu... Actually, I don't do all my menuing here. I do it after I get this. That's why it's messed up. Are you... You can just talk to her and then run away, actually. You don't need to, like, go through a dialogue or anything to get the Estus Flask. And you're going to want to get it, probably. So yeah, I usually go, this is obviously just completely optional, but usually go dark sign there, which we are going to use up here, by the way, just like that. And yeah, you can see like sprinting while menuing is very nice to, to be able to do. So that's like, not even just for like speed sake, but just, I don't know. It just makes everything smoother when you can do it. Um, so yeah, we got our skulls equipped by this point. Uh, we also do have a soul that I could pop here, I guess. Okay, so now um, here we're going to want to drop to the right side. Like, you would do the same thing in the Scholar here, but you want to grab that item, right? So you just simply, like, sprint. You just sprint off. Grab the item. It's Homeward Bone and a small soul. What you going to want? Also, I should probably split. Actually, no, I shouldn't. I believe we're going to buy the, a hand axe on this, but... Um, actually, I should explain this. So this archer up here, he can shoot at a whole range of times. Um, like, he can shoot way earlier than that. He can even shoot way later than that. Like, in Scholar, he actually shoots at the same time every time. So it's something you'll have to pay attention to. Also, up here, there's a possibility that these guys aggro right away. Um, oh, man. I should have made a save for this, probably. Okay, but if they don't aggro right away, you just throw the skull and you just run straight to the fog gate. Um, I probably should have made a save here, but... I'll just do this first little part again to show the other possibility. Like, yeah, it's either the egg or they don't. And if they don't, you just, you know, throw the skull right away and run to the fog gates, no problem. If they do, you kind of run into uh, the left corner and throw the skull. That way you won't get, like, sniped by the archer or the guys won't catch up to you as well. I should probably show that because it is, it is important to know. Because it's basically 50-50 whether um, the guys aggro. I guess I could probably show this headshot now too. So yeah, once it's lined up, one, two, and then on this fourth one, you can aim a bit higher and see you get the headshot, and it does uh, a bit more damage. I'll just go through this part again. Another thing, actually, there's a lot to say. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff. Um, also, with the Seldora set, you, you're going to probably want to sort your uh, your inventory. Oh my. 
So the way you do that is uh, like so. So you see, like the cell door set is over on the like the right side here. Um, like if you want to equip it quickly after a boss fight, um, the way you rearrange it is you go into your inventory here. It doesn't matter like which of these four you go to, but you you enter the menu and then you go just default position. So Y, like so Y A Y A, and then you see it swaps. So that's how you get it to like the front. So it's uh. It's quicker to equip, right? Like, versus having to like give an extra input at every th point, you just, you know, you just do that when you're trying to equip your souls, so. Also, this ring is quite unnecessary as well. So yeah, you can do all this stuff here, right? You can like sort your menu here. You can also do it while sprinting, pop your soul, um, get your inventory however you want it to be set up. Again, I like to do it like this and it's just, it just doesn't, there's no reason for it. I just I just have always done it like that. And yeah, we'll probably see a different timing on this archer too. So I'll make a save. Uh, I'll make a save up here. And my game actually just auto saves, so I'll use that. But yeah, it's very important. Like it, it's it's a little bit like sometimes this archer can be a little annoying. Uh, when you're trying to run past him, and sometimes he just shoots way earlier. Like, so keep an eye on him. That archer seat, look how much earlier on that one. So, gotta pay attention to that. Like, that's probably basically the early, earliest he can shoot that, so. Yeah, switch the skulls, climbing up this ladder. Okay, they didn't aggro again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this again. Into, or maybe I'll just intentionally aggro them, but. I did make a save back there, so. It's important to see where to throw the skull. And, like, how to do it. Because you don't really want to be resetting early in the game. It's just... Kind of a pain. Man, all this information and it's like the first uh <laughs> first five minutes of the run. Jumping off jumping there is also a little bit faster, technically. But optional. But yeah, you'll notice, like, for in terms of auto sprinting, like, I, I, like, alternate between, like, normal sprint and auto sprint, like, all the time. So. You, like, you'll get used to it. Um, okay, they didn't aggro this time, but okay, so now they aggroed. Like, I kind of intentionally did that, but you just come over here, throw the skull, and then just, you know, go to the fog gate, basically. Like, I kind of intentionally aggroed them, but in that case, you just throw a skull as the other times I did, but... Okay, now here, I like to run to this wall and then cut across. Might have been hard to see. And then this guy, you're also just going to cut across to the right, just like that. And you, you you never get hit by that that guy. You also never get caught. You throw a skull over there. You don't really have to roll that arrow because it'll always go above you. And then, and then that's basically it. Like, that's kind of the first section done. You get this door. And Scholar, there's actually an enemy over there that will come across. In this version, he he's there, but he doesn't aggro, so... You just come and grab the bonfire. Okay, now here's another little, like, trick you can do. Um, when you're in dialogue of, of, like, an NPC or something, you can you can actually pop souls during it. So, like, like, I'm talking here. But since I, like, have the soul equipped, I can hit X during this, and I'll pop the soul. Like, while in the menu, you see I just popped it. So that's something you can do to save a bit of time. You can do it with boss souls too, but it's a little bit differently. I'll show it. I'll show it after this boss. Um. But yeah, so what we're gonna buy here is the uh, we're gonna buy the hand axe, and probably at least one firebomb, I guess. Um, the hand axe is the main weapon we're gonna use for last giant. It's a pretty solid weapon. We'll, we'll use the buffs for it. Um, and the thing with the hand axe too, you can actually pick up one just above this uh this room here. And if you wanted to buy some more firebombs, maybe you could, but it's it's quite unnecessary for this run, so... Um, we'll just buy it, and we'll buy a firebomb. Okay. And, uh, yeah, so this, this area is probably pretty important to practice, but... What I'm gonna do is, is very consistent. So you just run past these guys, you drop down, run past. Enter this. Also, I guess another thing, another mechanic in this game is when you're two-handing, like something in your left hand you actually go through a lot of animations faster like queuing up fog gates right okay so you're gonna just sprint past all these guys and then you're gonna run in the middle through here that's actually quite important you're also gonna jump into this guy like that i also probably should have healed but 
Like, once you're down here, you won't really get chased. But yeah, that's probably... That's a section that's... It's, it's good to practice because, yeah, you gotta jump into that guy. Um, I actually did make a save, so I'll show it again. And, and one thing that can happen, too, is... Uh, I'll point it out when we cross the enemy, but there's one enemy that can be turned around, which is actually, it doesn't really make anything different, but maybe makes it a bit more consistent, I guess. Or just, a, like, I don't know. Like, you see that the first enemy who's attacked, I, I just kind of outspace. Like, that guy can be turned around, and then he won't really do anything. You just run run past him the same way. Um, and yeah, there's a the firebomb guy as well. That I, uh, that I ran past. You just, you just want to run in the center. Like, I'll explain it again. So, yeah, again, I'm two-handing my left-handed weapon. In this case, it's my fist. And usually, I would actually pop a life gem here. Like, usually, I just use a life gem. And I also equip my fire bombs here, too. But you could do that before whatever. But yeah, see how he's turned around this time? You just run past him the same. Run around this guy. And you want to run through the, like... You want to take this path through here. So that the fire bomb guy will miss. And then you jump into this guy to stagger him. And you'll notice you actually take a bit of damage, but it doesn't count as a hit. So it's no problem. And then we're going to throw this firebomb at the barrels. And what this does is it knocks down this turtle and then also makes it so the firebomb guys at the top won't explode you. Like hit a barrel, which is pretty rare. But yeah, so throw a skull over there. We're just going to go right to the fog gate. Right to the fog gate. And since, uh, yeah, and then we're going to open this gate as well. Open this gate so that we can come back later. Um, and then here, we're gonna use an Estus. I like using an Estus here, just on full health and don't have to rest after. And we're gonna put on our armor. And then we're also gonna buff on this elevator. It's just the fastest place to do it. Okay, and then this is another thing that requires definitely some practice here. Um, hopefully that's a good save to make. So you can just sprint past this guy. He'll actually never catch up to you on this fog gate if you're if you manage your stamina properly. And then we have a we have a quite specific fight here. So I'll try to explain this as I'm doing it, but I don't know, I'll try to also not mess it up. But so you're gonna come in, you're gonna do a full stamina bar of swings here. You're gonna come around, three hits on the inside of this guy's leg. You're gonna throw a bomb here. I'm actually slow here, probably. Yeah, okay. I actually kind of forgot for a second how to do it, man. I think I made the save. Um, but yeah, it's a very scripted kill on this boss. Granted, you do it properly. And, uh, I was just a little slow on that, on that urn throw. Which is probably good for people to see, actually. So they see what not to do. But yeah, hopefully there's a good save here. Hopefully I'm not at the top of the elevator or something. Which I actually could be. Okay, nice. Yeah, so you, you want to have your urns on your uh, hotbar here. And you could also jump here to make it a little bit faster. So yeah, we're going to come in. We're going to do sprint attack right away. Full stamina bar of swings. Uh, you're going to come around the back here. Three. Oh, and then he does the jump RNG. Okay, this RNG, um, it's kind of... You would kind of just do the normal rest of the fight. Um... It, it happens, like, it happens sometimes, but, yeah, th I mean, you just do this, basically, but. I want to show, like, the fight that, there's a, there's a very, um, like, there's a fight that goes the same way almost every time. Like, the only variation is actually that back jump he does. Um, and it, it happens sometimes, but you just, you know, you just do what I did there, basically, just, uh, you need to know how to dodge the stomp, stomps correctly, and I don't think I'll go into that so much on this because like generally when you're running this it's you don't get that but it's it's a good thing to practice how to fight that boss like without having some like scripted kill you know it's a good thing to practice because you know he actually he's got some really big hitboxes on his stomps and stuff it's important to practice okay hopefully we don't get a backstab here so three hits I actually could be a bit slow here so throw the urn right away there we go. So four hits and then another urn here. You can... Actually, you're not supposed to do that hit. I just realized. That's a good uh, demonstration of the hitboxes, dude. Okay, we're getting there. Almost. <laughs> Almost there. But that was actually perfect. You're, just, you're not supposed to do uh, another hit after that urn.
Okay, here we go. And then I guess there's there's two possibilities for the final attack he does. Like he can do like a quick stomp versus or like a quick triple stomp versus like a single. Most of the time he'll do the single, but it, I don't know. So three hits there. Throw the urn. Four hits. Another urn, and then you're gonna bait out and attack here. So he does a slow one, and then you're just gonna finish him off. And then you're actually gonna dark sign right away. So that's that's how the fight goes, probably 90% of the time. And you, you might be wondering, I just dark signed, I lost all my souls, but the reason why you do it right away is because you actually keep your souls, right? I've got 12,000. And you're saving a bone is basically the whole idea of that. Um, I'll show that other attack he can do, actually. Um, yeah. Yeah, Scholar, it, it, it doesn't change too much on the boss fights, but it's more on the running sections, which uh, this will be mainly about, I guess. But yeah, this boss fight, like, that's how you do it. That's how you do it right there. And and that, like I said, that works 90 plus percent of the time. Or the, not not that it works. It works 100% of the time, but it'll be like that 90 plus percent of the time for sure. That's why it's nice to have like urns and buffs and stuff for this fight because you get such an easy fight. And that's why Explorer is a great class to start with. So yeah, again, so three hits here. If if you find that he's attacking you after... Oh my God, he loves the back stuff. Actually hit him with the urn though. So yeah, you can just go under his legs and spam him again and th throw an urn again. Like, it's still the same kind of idea, but... You can go to the other leg, too, if you want. I could have killed him. I want to show the attack I was talking about. This is the other possible attack you could get. It's not this one. Um... Like, you'll see, I got the single stomp at the end of last fight, and he just keeps doing the single stomp. This is... Ugh, he just keeps doing the single stomp. Do the double. There it is. Right, so you, you you can attack during that, and then you walk out here, and then you attack again, basically. I shouldn't have gotten him so low, but that's kind of how you do it. I'll, I'll do it. I'll, like, punch him just to show what you can do. Okay, slow again. <laughs> that's what I mean. You got to be careful, dude, of this boss. Here we go. So you can get a hit. And then you just walk over here, and then you get the rest of your hits. And it would be three with the hand axe, right? So that's what you do. You kill him, and then you dark sign. Right away. Like, as soon as you can. And you'll see, I lost the 100 souls, but I gain, you know, the 14,000 or whatever. 12,000. So yeah, that's, that's, um... That is... I, I'll do one more fight. Just to, just to get it in there. Like, I feel like I see a lot of people doing no-hit DS2, and they don't really know how to fight Last Giant very well. Um, but yeah, this is this is a great kill for starting Explorer. The other classes don't really get this because you probably won't have buffs and you won't, you know. I guess you could use fire bombs in place of the urns, but but yeah, just one more fight and then we'll continue the run as normal. Yeah, again, just run past this guy. I like to jump. I usually jump. Yeah, if you find you're getting an attack after you throw this urn, it's probably because you're not managing stamina correctly, basically. Like, on those three hits... Okay, here we go. Here's the quick one. This is perfect. So you just walk to the side, and that's it. There we go. Perfect. I showed everything I wanted to show. Good. Yeah, if you find you're getting an attack um, after you throw the first urn, it's because your stamina management, when you're going uh, for the three hits, is, is too slow. Like, you, you want your stamina to be pretty precise there. So that's why that could be happening. Like, that's a problem that I've seen. So, okay. So now you should be full health here. Just make sure you're full health. Um, like, that's why I drank the acid before. And I'll show you how to do this thing with the boss soul. So I do have my controller there. Um, so you want to, uh, again, put it into your, like, hop bar or whatever. And you're going to hit A and then immediately hit X after. Right? So you see you see my, uh, my controller there? So A and then X immediately. And then you're going to use it. And then you're going to go into the dialogue. And to see I'm popping the soul. So what we're going to buy here is the key and two bright bugs. And that's actually it. And then we're going to talk until um, 
So I just talked to her. I just got the serpent ring plus one. And then we're going to talk to her until she starts saying... I think it's four times you have to talk to her. When she starts saying, like, my love at the end of the... When she starts saying this, then then you're good to go. Um, and then we're going to drop down here. And we got the shortcut earlier. And you're actually, you're going to want to equip this ring, too. So we got the servant plus one. More souls. Um, and here, for this part, we can just run through the middle of these guys. I'm going to grab the door. And then this guy, he's got two possible attacks. Um, this one you just run past. There's another one you have to dodge. It's like a bit faster. Like, you'll, you'll see it. Oh, and there's actually a new strat here that I don't know how to do. That's unfortunate. Usually, the, the older way of doing this is you just come here and stand in the shadow, roll past them. Just spam them. I think there's a new there's a newer strat here, though. Does anybody have a clip of that, actually? But yeah, just, just you know, two ballistic. Make sure you have your ring equipped here. Yeah, there's, yeah, in, in that area, you'll notice a big difference. There's no, there's no guys at, before the boss, so that's kind of nice. Yeah, we've got our ring of blades, so we're going to equip that, too. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what the other strat is for Pursuer there. there. I think there's a strat where you just, like, run into the boss and you don't even have to do anything. Like, you don't have to roll him, basically. Uh, like, maybe I'll have a clip of that before the end of this, but... Okay, we're gonna get this bonfire. And then we're also gonna go and get this large shard here. We're only actually gonna get to plus four on this route, and it sounds, that sounds intimidating, maybe, but... When you see our damage, it's actually not. It's, our damage is insane. Yeah, so we can get that large shard. We're just going to run back here. Um, going to go here. Okay, so now we're going to come and open this door. And and yeah, so I said earlier, killing Dragon Rider is actually quite optional. Um, I would recommend probably to do it, just so you don't have to worry about your soul memories much. You'll get some extra levels as well. So that's what we're going to go do right now. And yeah, this is just, it just kind of takes some extra time. Um, we're also going to get rid of an important invader later. Um, there's, it's the same girl as on Scholar. Like, there's a girl up here, Lysia, the, the miracle merchant. If you kill her, um, it'll prevent two invasions later. And one of them's actually pretty important, I guess, so. Yeah, we're going to go kill her up here. And I'm going to use the dagger for killing her too, so. And I like to equip the soul um and we're gonna pop it after the boss fight basically so i'll like when we get there i'll explain it i guess like this this part is not very complicated it's quite it's quite simple and a lot of people choose to do the, to do this part before anything else and you could do that there's just not really a point like the places where you could get hit are like before last giants and pursuer like that so like i don't see any reason of doing this earlier so make a save just in case I want to show this again. But yeah, you just run to the right of this guy. And he won't hit you. And this guy, you kind of want to circle around and just make sure you not get slammed. Because like, he's got slams. Like, a lot of times you have to rotate more than that. Not get hit by a slam. And then I usually do a jump up here. And this is where baby jump's helpful. But you can just run around this side. I, I don't need a show running around this side. You just run past that guy and run the normal way. But I, I do this jump. You just jump across here, and it's it's really easy to do. But if you have, if you don't have baby jump mod on, or you don't have the fix, then it could be a problem. You just run past this guy. Uh, Renoa, thanks for the raid, by the way. Now this boss, so it's gonna be um, six and a half steps. So now, and you just run, you just run past them. So count six and a half steps. Um, I believe it's six and a half, and then and then you just uh, you just sprint past, and he'll just run off the edge. So that's pretty easy. And yeah, see, I, I popped that soul after. And then I also like to equip this soul here, too. That's for doing another, like, kind of dialogue thing. Like, pop the soul in dialogue of, of McDuff. Or Len, uh, whatever his name is, Lendengrass. Okay, now for, for um, Lysia, we don't need anything. And like I said, she will invade later. So, um, we're just going to kill her. So you do three hits, three staggered hits. What are you doing? And so she'll aggro. And then you're going to wait until she stands up. And then you're just going to keep smacking her. 
Just keep doing this until she falls off. And she can do like a melee attack, but the dagger is nice for this because it's fast. And she won't really be able to get it off. So you can just do that. Get some extra souls and then she won't invade later, so. And then we're going to go back. And now we're finally going to level up and we're going to go to the rotten. First rotten. So, um, you can talk to her. It takes, I think, you have to talk to her three times before you can start leveling up. So a way to just make it a bit more efficient is you can talk to her Bearer here. Of the curse. And, like, that counts as a dialogue, so it just makes it a bit faster. Um, we're also going to pick up this bow, which is kind of important for a little bit. Um, and then, yeah, I'm going to do... I'm going to pop the soul here while talking to him. So, we need to buy... Um, we need to buy the rapier. I do not believe we need the mace on this. Or, oh, you could get the mace, maybe. Actually, no, no, no. There's, there's no need for mace, actually. No need for mace. Um, we're going to buy... All of these arrows, all of the iron arrows, and maybe like 20 of these is probably good. And then we're also going to buy uh, six of these, right? So that gets us to a plus three, and then we picked up the large shot earlier. So that'll give us to a plus four, and, that, and we're going to say plus four for the whole run. Um, at least until we get the key to the embedded. So, so yeah, get your plus four. And that's everything we need from him. I'm going to take off the armor for the drops coming up. Okay, and so what I like to level up here is... Uh, I like to go 19 ADP, which gets us the 96 agility. And what that means is that we're going to have, uh, I guess it's 11 iframes, right? So 90, 90 iframe or 90 agility is um, nine. Or did I say, wait, it's 105 is 13, 99 is 12. So yeah, this is 11. Um, and then yeah, 92 would be. 92 would be 10. So 96, 11 iframes is quite enough for the Rotten. Like, Rotten's a quite an easy boss, and you also practice him a lot. But the way, the way you fight him is... You don't even have to roll, really, so... But I just, you know, you can, you can actually just not level up ADP at all here if you wanted to, but I choose to. Um, we also need 12 decks for the Rapier, so let's get that. And then we're also going to get uh, 15 Endurance. And 15 Endurance is kind of nice. So yeah, 12 decks... Uh, 12 decks, 1980p, and 15 endurance is what I usually get. That's what I have in my notes, at least, so. Um, now we're gonna come here. We're gonna buy the last bright bug that we didn't buy earlier, now that we have the souls for it. Thanks. That's all we need there. And, uh, okay, so now, now we need the cat ring. We're gonna, gonna go down to the rotten, so. Grab the cat ring. You can also, like, equip the arrows while you're sprinting and stuff. Usually what I would do. So we're going to want, yeah, we're going to want uh, probably all the skulls, cat ring, and then probably all the bones too. Or maybe you only need one. I have, it, I have in my notes one bone. I'll trust it. So one bone. I hope that's right. Oh <laughs> um, and then you're going to equip the cat ring. Equip the cat ring. And then you're just going to, you know, you can go slow here. There's a much faster lineup. You just roll off here, but... You can just kind of take your time here. Make sure you're getting this lined up and just drop down. Make sure you have the cat ring on, obviously. And you're going to just do this like this. Now, here you have a choice. I'll, I'll show I'll show both options, probably. Um, I'll show the way I usually do it first. Usually I roll off into here. And then I what you can do is like a little trick where you do a punch off of this. You kind of decrease your fall and then backstep onto here. That's usually what I do because it's faster, and I honestly, it's it's really easy once you get the hang of it. Um, but it might seem dangerous for people because it, it's not hard to miss that. Like it's, it, it 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 can happen, I guess. Like once you get really good at it, you're never gonna miss it. But maybe once you're first learning it, um, so you could do that to save some time. It's also nice to transition into an all bosses run where you need to get this bonfire anyways, and that saves a lot of time actually. But so yeah, you can do that, or you can do it um, this way, uh, where you just drop down here. And that's what most people do, I think. I'll probably heal, because my life gems are a bit messed up. But You just drop down here, and then you would, um, you would just roll onto this one, and then drop onto this one, and then drop onto the bottom. So two ways of doing it. I prefer the first way. That's what I usually do. Um, yeah, other way works, for sure. Um, okay, and this part is pretty straightforward. You just drop down here. And just sprint. Like, even if you don't get a roll when you land there, it's no problem. You just sprint past these guys. So now, we're gonna do a sprint attack off this ledge. Roll. 
And I do another attack. And then you can just drop down here. Um, or you can actually decrease the fall damage you take there if you land on like one of those little beams. But it's really, it's not important. Just make sure you have enough health for those drops, I guess. Um, and now this part, um, this part definitely takes some practice, I think. Like there's some jumps that we're going to do. And the way that people normally go on Scholar, uh, where they don't do any jumps, is is maybe... It's actually a bit risky, I guess. But I, I'm sure, like, if you wanted to, you could work it out. I, I honestly don't know how it would work, so I'm not going to show anything, but... Um, yeah, this is how I would recommend doing it. It's not as hard as it looks, maybe. So, um, first of all, you're going to just go through here. And then you can attack off of this. Um... And then you just take this path, basically, and you're going to do these jumps. And I, like, if this seems scary, like, there, I'm sure there's another way to do this. But, yeah, so you're going to come across here. Just jump across. It's not it's not too hard, but... Run past this guy, and then on the end of this bridge, you're going to jump to the right. And then here you can just kind of line up a jump. We're going across there. And it's important to note that there's a, like a st spitting statue that you can run into, so you just jump across here. Like this statue spits here, so like that is a hit. So, um, it it maybe looks pretty difficult. It's it's really not. Like as long as you have the baby jump fix, like you're not gonna get a baby jump and fall down. Um, another thing actually that's important to to note in this game is like to get the maximum distance off of jumps, you don't want to jump on the very edge. You actually, you want to jump, like, quite a bit before the, the very edge of, a, of like, a platform. Because, yeah, like, if you're right on the edge, you, you actually just won't go as far. So, yeah, I'll do this again. So, drop down here. And then I actually usually sprint attack and then attack again. I kind of messed it up last time. Because, yeah, like, in, in, see, in vanilla, like, there's a bunch of hounds along this path. I mean, you could definitely do it, but... Um... I think it's it's probably riskier because you have to like go past these hounds and they have some really fast attacks and stuff. So you just run across this way. One thing that's important, there's gonna be statues here, first of all. But there's actually a little like see that body that just appeared? Um Like if you're running if you're running through here and you're like and you run into him, like it maybe you're gonna have less time. So it's important to go like around that guy. Like in you know, if you're practicing this, it's quite obvious, but so yeah, we're gonna run around this guy and then we're gonna jump off the side. This is also a very fast way of doing this, by the way. And then you simply just jump across here. All right, and that's and that's it. Like that's all the the jumping you have to do here, basically. That's all the jumping on the whole run, almost. So, yeah. So you break through here, and then we're gonna actually go get these poison arrows. Now, there's a dog. There's a there's a hound in here, who is kind of annoying, because the poison arrows are right in there. So normally, what you would do here is you go through this fog gate, um, and you come around wide. And notice there's a drop right there, so don't go down. And then there's a statue. You just come wait right here. Wait for this guy to, uh, like, get reasonably close. And then you just jump across this. And then you'll have lots of time to pick up the item and be on your way. So that's, that's normally what you would do there. And then I you can pop a soul gem off this. I actually missed it, but it doesn't really matter. And then you're going to... After you get to this platform, you're going to just jump across here. And you're going to land on all these, like, urn things and just roll down. That's it. I mean, you can get the branch for later. And then during this running section, I'd usually equip all my stuff. Again, that's not something that's super important. And now this part, this part will take some practice um, for people. Uh, like a lot of people who are interested in no hit running DS2, if they've ever watched DS2 no hit runs, um, they've probably seen people killing these statues because obviously they do spit at you and it's a hit if you get hit by them. Um, Definitely do not do that. It's it's just a waste of time and effort. It's much more efficient to just sprint through here. So what I would normally do here, I'd have I have, you know, this setup, bright bugs, the ooze here. And like I, I guess just watch this. Watch this a number of times and just keep practicing it. Like make a safe file back there and just keep practicing this. So you're gonna run through the center of these ones. I usually pop my bright bug here, but it doesn't really matter. Um so yeah, so in the middle whoops. In the middle through there and then you go to the bit a bit to the right side um yeah i usually pop the bright bug here and it's just to like regenerate stamina and stuff and then you're gonna run this path basically so aim at the left of this like puddle 
Then you're gonna start cutting across. And that's it. And then you roll through all of these. Uh, and then you're gonna run this way, circle around those ones, and then you're good. And that's it. Like it's it's maybe looks intimidating. It's actually super easy. It's not like it's a super precise path or anything. It's actually really easy to do. And then come here, use your ooze. So yeah, just practice that part and, and definitely do that. Don't kill any statues. And also here, you're going to run around wide just like that. And that's it. You don't have to kill any statues. Now into the run. So this is a fight that you're going to get good at no matter what, because you have to fight him four times. Um, the idea is you want to break his weapon arm. Like that's your absolute priority to just hit his, his weapon arm. And then <clears throat> your next priority, like if, if he doesn't attack where you can't hit it, you want to hit his other arm. Like you want to break his arms. And the reason you want to do that is because, uh, like, obviously he can't attack with an arm he doesn't have. So it speeds up the fight significantly if you can break his arms, right? And yeah, you'll notice how I like to fight him. I, I always outspace stuff. Like, I like outspacing stuff. Uh, it's just, yeah, like, there's no reason to roll really here, so... I guess I can explain some of the boss attacks, like, definitely gonna have to practice this boss. You have to fight him four times, so you better get consistent at him. Um, but yeah, again, so you want to just, you want to focus on the arms. Focus on the arms, especially his weapon arm, because what if he breaks his weapon arm, like, there's very few attacks. Like, most of his attacks have, like, no range at all once that weapon is gone. So... Um, yeah, I would practice the fight like this. So outspacing stuff, like get your punish in. Generally, you're going to be able to get like one or two hits off, right? So here, outspace it, two hits, get back out. He does this. Usually just do one attack on this. Get out. Again, outspace. Two hits. You can hit the arm here. And you can actually do something else there if you want to be a little bit faster, which I can show. But yeah, always go for the arms, basically. Outspace, back in. This time you can just strafe around it. Smits on the arm. There we go. There's, we there's weapon arm. And now, and now, like, I basically hardly have to get away from the boss. And I could be way more aggressive now, right? So, like, it's not like if you had a weapon, obviously, I'd have to go way further than that. But since the weapon arm is gone, it'll speed up the fight way more. And it also, also makes it just a lot easier to beat him. So, definitely focus on that. Uh, there's, a, there's, like, a way you can fight him where you just, like, sit in front of him and just roll everything. But... Since stamina is limited in this game, like rolling takes a big chunk of stamina and, you know, you have 11 iframes, which is a decent amount, but it's still too less than the other game's base roll. Would definitely recommend to do it like this. And plus, when you start doing a run like SL1 or, you know, lower iframes or something, this is how you want to fight him. Like, you don't really want to be rolling because you have, it's way more likely to make a mistake, right? So here's what you can do on this deck. You can roll it and get like up to three hits on the arm there, right? That's just a slightly faster way of doing it. If you want to do that on that attack. But you can also just not worry about that. But if I was going for pure speed, I would for sure be doing that. But I think, yeah, like doing the fight just like this. Uh, like there it is again. Dharma should probably break like next hit or something. Oh, what a scam. This also has way less range than people think most of the time. Yeah, I'm just going to hit him. I can't really hit the arm on that one, so break. Yeah, and there we go. So that's the fight. Make sure you got your ring and your armor on. And that's that's the rotten, so you got to do them four times. And the fight, the damage, even plus four on the NG plus three rotten is plenty of damage, so it's not a concern. And we're also, yeah, of course, we're going to go to Shelva on this route. We're going to get Flynn's ring. We're going to get the Sanctum Mace for our TSR setups. And, uh, and yeah, so... So yeah, that's basically the idea on Rotten. And you'll have to practice outspa outspacing the attacks. And I would definitely do the fight like that. I think it's just the best way to do the fight. And then, of course, when you have lower iframes, it makes the fight way easier, too. Another thing, actually, that might be good for people is, like, I, a lot of people complain about, like, say they're opening a door or something, and they start sprinting, and then that actually cancels the opening door animation you like come out of it i'll try to show it on some like some door later or, or fog gates as well if you're using auto sprint like you'll see you have the icon in the left there 
if you're using auto sprint and you queue that in a door, it actually doesn't like take you out of it. Like that's just like instead of like trying to hold B after opening a door, you can just do that. So I I roll this because um you won't get staggered for as long, right? So you just just do that. Obviously, it's not necessary. Now we're gonna get this bonfire. So the plus seven longbow is actually in this area, and it's a completely free pickup. So we're gonna get our skulls equipped. We're gonna have our bones ready. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go pick up this item, and it's totally it's totally worth picking up. It's really nice, actually, that you don't have to worry about upgrading a bow. And, like, did I ever use this? Like, maybe you don't even need to pick up the short bow in the chest, I guess, right? Like, I don't think I ever used this for anything, so maybe you don't have to pick it up. But, yeah, so you're going to just run through uh, just like this, and you, you won't really get hit. That That's an archer there, but he, all these enemies are really stupid. So you're just going to run, drop down in here, throw the skull over there somewhere, and then just sprint off here. And that's it. And you just bone. Like, it's... Completely free, plus seven longbow, and it does a lot of damage, it does significant damage, so. Yep, and you don't have to worry about upgrading a bow at all in this run, and of course the bow is used very often, so. Okay, um, now, hopefully I didn't just aggro that guy, so now for this part, um, there's something that is worth trying out, like you don't even have to practice this, but it's always worth trying, because it's actually just a safer way of doing it, but you can try jumping across this gap, Right, so you just come like this, and you jump across. I think I missed it there, right? So I miss it, and then you just land down on the platform. Like, you can jump across um, the gap, and then it's faster if you do. And then if you miss, you just land down here, and it's no problem. You just have to make sure you have decent health and, of course, cat ring equipped, because you... Like, I actually landed on that, but then fell down after, so I took way less damage. But then, yeah, if you fall down, you just shoot that, and then you're good to go, right? Um... I'll show making the jump, and also show how much damage you would take normally if you miss. Because it's not a lot of damage. Like, it's... Or, no, it, it's it's a decent amount of damage where you have to actually, like, pay attention to your health. Like, I think it's probably, like, I don't know, three-fifths of it, maybe. So you just kind of do this. Like, you don't even have to worry about lining it up. Like, okay, I made it that time. Um, but yeah, you would just keep going, of course, normally. I, I just want to show how much damage it is. That's all I want to show here. Like, just so people have an idea of what it is. But obviously, you can just do it yourself. But I'll show it. I feel like this has already been going for a while <laughs> so far. I'll try to... I don't know. There's a, there's a lot to say, but um, I'll try to speed it up a little bit, maybe. Like, one thing that's interesting about DS2 versus, like, a DS3 no-hit run is that there's actually a lot less to know when you're running DS2. Like, there's a lot less possibilities, and it's because you're you're killing a lot of enemies and stuff, so... So this is how much damage around you take, I guess. Right? So it's about three-fifths, maybe, and you just come to the corner, shoot the thing, and you're fine. And you can actually even pop the soul here. That's what I normally do if I miss. I just pop the, the rotten soul. And then we just keep going. So this this path thing is pretty important. So you're gonna run through here, and then you'll see this like projectile going past me. You don't want to get hit by that. Um, and then we actually don't need the bonfire, so we're just gonna take this path. You want to run at it slightly an angle here. You can see I'm not running perfectly in line with the path, and it's because an arrow can like an arrow from that guy can come up behind you. Like he'll he'll shoot you. So yeah, you can do that. And then we're just gonna jump down here, and then continue. Yeah, like I said, we don't need the bonfire for any reason. You can jump across this gap. You can also just go in the stairs. Doesn't really matter. Go past the bridge here. This is... If I, if I did make the jump, by the way, this is normally where I'd pop the soul, like, while waiting for these things to open. This would kind of take a while. Okay, now, um... This place... This place is pretty simple. Uh... We're going to pick up the ascetic that's on the right over there. So how it works is you're going to shoot this um, a couple times. So shoot it once, and then you're going to turn around, shoot this one. And then you're going to wait for it to pop up again. Then you're going to shoot it again. So two times on that one. This is a big soul. I guess it's, was it? It's either 10 or 20k, so it's pretty big. And then you're going to come and shoot this for a third time. So it's three times total on this one. And then you shoot that one once. And so once you do that, then you're good. 
Now, on this part, um, I'll make a save here because there's a few possibilities on this chest. There's technically there's technically three possibilities on this chest, but the third one is it, it's a big meme. So I'm pretty sure it's like a healing thing. But yeah, the ascetic is in a trapped chest up here. So how you would do this is you run to this door. And you're actually going to throw a skull way over there. And skull range is absolutely amazing in this game. And these guys will just be really stupid. So you open the chest and you roll right on this line here. Just one roll. In this case, we got arrows, right? So the way I line this up is you kind of want to line it up on that corner, right? And this is what these look at how stupid these enemies. This is what I was talking about earlier. Like they're so dumb. They're really dumb. So that's why you can throw that skull like that. And even though the duration's way done, like they're still just so stupid. That's why you can do that. It's very convenient, actually. So yeah, that was the arrow, um, arrow RNG. And then the other possibility is like a poison mist, which does stagger you. And to be honest, there's no rule if that's a hit or not. Like, I guess it maybe it's a hit. I don't know. I usually just roll through the stagger. I could just roll and it's fine. So I don't know. It, it's not something that you have to worry about. So yeah, throw the skull deep over here. And then run directly towards the chest. Hopefully we get the poison this time. But actually, I think the save file locks in the archer or uh, the crossbow. So you do the exact same thing. But when the poison's done, you just go back in and pick it up. It's it, like, it's really simple. So you just do that. And then we're going to come through here. It, like I said, like it's, it's really simple. So now, now this part's actually a little bit more complicated. So hopefully the safe file doesn't mess up the enemies here, but you're going to drop down here, run past this guy and you're going to roll. You need to be quite specific on that path you take there. So you don't get blocked in. And you need to be fast too. Like you need to be fast and make sure you're on the right line so you don't get locked in by those bug guys. So, so yeah, there's that. And then we get Flynn's ring and that's it. Like, and that's all we're here for. So like that's all of Shelva done. I'll do that again. Hopefully it's the same. Like hopefully the enemies aren't messed up. But, but yeah, you're going to roll. Like you, you, you want to be quite specific on, on that line you roll. Um, and it, it probably takes a bit of practice. Like, you don't want to have like a stray roll and then they get like caught by one of the enemies or something. But if you roll, if you if you do that exact path, like if you're fast and getting up the stairs and you run right on the side of them, you're you're not gonna get hit by anybody. So just drop down, run past this guy, roll back here, and run around that guy like that. You'll you won't get hit. Like if you do that properly, so. Yeah, and that's and that's all of Shelva. So that's it. We get our Flynn's ring up here, which is an absolutely amazing ring. I believe it gives just 50 flat AR, which is a lot. Like, that's a lot of AR. There it is. We're going to bone out. That's Shelva done. So, yeah, we get our Sedic. We get our Flynn's Ring. Um, and Scholar, if you do the Shelva route, you'd actually have to do this a lot differently, right? Like, the, the there's two Ascetics, but they're way deeper in Shelva, so... It's part of the reason why it's so nice running vanilla. And also, you may have noticed that I didn't have to get any sort of key to open this DLC. And that's that's another benefit of vanilla. It's because you started with the DLC keys at the start of the game. And then I guess I didn't also mention another reason why you would want to run vanilla is there's no Forlorn. So we don't have to worry about any homeward stuff. Like, we don't have to worry about anything really. So, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pop you this soul here. Soul. Actually, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Okay, I'll just make sure I save like 20k. I say to get 35 endurance and 16 decks and 16 decks is for the bow. And then we're going to leave all those remaining souls for, um, for lightning resins, which we're about to go get. One thing you could do if you wanted to like sacrifice some endurance and go into ADP, 99 is another iframe, right? So this would be at 12 iframes. And if you wanted to go even more, you could get to 105, which is 13. There's not really a reason to, um, but just for the rotten fights, like if you wanted to go higher iframes, you could do that and just sacrifice endurance. The levels aren't that important. So, yeah, and the 16 decks again is just for the longbow. Yep. This is actually, this is a really fun run though, actually. Like, I, I really, I enjoy running DS2 more than the other Souls games for sure. I don't know, it's just something about it. It's just really nice. There we go. We got our longbow. Got some poison. Another thing 
on this run uh, is that we don't get Gavlan, right? We're not we're not buying a bunch of arrows from Gavlan, so we're a little restricted on poison. We do, however, have some poison throwing knives that we picked up in Shova. I kind of didn't mention it when I picked it up, but it was on those stairs after I dropped down in the bug room. You can pick this up, I guess. Three bones. Okay, so what you can actually do here is uh, you can actually hit this guy. All right, so I'm going to equip Flynn's Ring. There's a, there's a Basilisk behind this, so if you jump attack, you'll see I got him, right? I would say you might as well do that. I don't know. You just jump attack into it. If you if you can't get it, like sometimes it's hard to get. Uh, if you don't get it, what you can do is do this like as we're normally going to do it here, but then you can just shoot the Basilisk or something. Um, so yeah, you can just do that. So yeah, you, obviously we picked up this branch in the, in the Black Gulch or whatever it's called. And pull the lever. We're going to use two skulls here. Just lob the skulls back there. And so, yeah, I'll show you what you would do if the guy was still alive. So, throw the skull and then throw the next one. So, at this point, you would be able to start to see his feet. You just shoot at him, right? You just... I think two normal arrows would be enough, probably. Or you can use a fire arrow, which we do have some of. Which I picked up earlier, kind of subconsciously. Um, this is also completely optional. You can come over here and pick up the soul. So just like open the door normally and that guy will get pushed to the side. So you can do that too. It's it's completely optional. You don't have to, but I guess I will on this and I'll pop it when I get the, the lightning resins. Um, this part's pretty straightforward. Just run through. We're going to throw a skull. It's it's You don't have to. Uh, I actually normally would on this though. I'll show you what I mean. So you just run past this guy. Um, this guy on scholar is a rock thrower, but he's not on this. So you just run past. I actually, I, I don't mind throwing a skull up here. So you just come up here, throw the skull. And it's because there's a rock guy. That guy's a rock throwing guy. And when you're running through this path, he can get behind you. And it just becomes a bit awkward to roll it. Because you have to roll sideways. So Especially on like SL1 and stuff. Hey, just do that. Um, we're going to go pick up... Hopefully I have enough bones. Three bones. Is that... I don't know. We'll see. Actually, I could just not bone here. Maybe... Maybe that's what I normally do. Yeah, we're still going to grab our TSR. I'm not even going to bother boning. Oh, yeah, we're actually going to dark sign here. I kind of forgot about that. Oh, actually, you know what? I kind of messed this up a bit. Uh, what? Okay. What I would normally do, and this isn't like complicated to explain, but. What I would normally do is do this section first, like so come here first, and then dark sign, and then get RTSR, and then dark sign. That's normally what I would do, actually, so so just keep that in mind. So normally I would get this bonfire, I would come this way first, and then we're, there's a merchant up here we're going to buy the lightning from, and then I would dark sign because we would run out, of, we're going to spend all of our souls on, on the lightning, and, and then I would go get RTSR, and then dark sign again back to this bonfire. That's normally what I would do, I kind of just forgot about that. Okay, now this part, um, this is actually a bit more complicated than on Scholar because you'll see these trees. If you listen, you can hear them. But the problem is they, they don't do anything. On Scholar, those trees are like alluring skulls for these enemies. You see them right there. But on Vanilla, they just don't do anything. So you're actually going to run to this spot here. Like if you run a bit deeper, the camera starts to change and it becomes a bit harder to see, right? You see there's way more fog. So you're going to come to here so you can see the guy. And then you're going to wait. This is actually a perfect moment to go. But you're going to wait until... Like, see that big tree that I shot at in the middle? You're going to wait until he's on the right side of it. And then you're going to be able to just sprint through, basically. And maybe you can wait for him to be facing that, that direction as well. But, uh... You just don't really want him to be walking over. Because you don't want to aggro him, right? So, so here's a perfect time to go. He's walking that way. He's on the right side of that big tree. You just hug the left side. Right, just hug the left side and the merchant's right up here. So it's not like a big deal. You can check to make sure he's not following you. Um, obviously he's not. Like he's right uh, He's right there. I think he's behind that tree. So you can just do that. Um, and then this guy, I think he's got five dialogue to go through. So Or I'll pop the soul. And we're literally just going to buy all the lightning. Like, you can maybe, you know, you can maybe just go 20 or 
Like, you can go like 15 probably and that's enough, but I just I just buy it all because it's faster and it's not like I really need the souls at this point. And then I just dark sign. Yeah, and then and then now is when you would go get RTSR and then you would dark sign again. So, yeah, I just kind of messed it up, but... Um... You know, actually, buying... Like, what you could do early in the run is just buy all the bones. Like, buying only one bone, it's not... Like, it's, it's probably the fastest way of doing this, but... You might as well just buy all the bones, like, earlier in the run. When we went back to the cat... Like, while getting cat ring. Like, just buy all the... Just buy all the bones, you know? Make it simple. Um... No, you would dark sign. You would get the resins first, right? So you go, you go over there, get the resins, and then dark sign, and then you get the RTSR after that. Okay, so now we're gonna go to Bastille and co kill Rune Sentinels. A lot of people run when they run DS2 any percent, they go kill Flexa, which is just it's not really something you want to do. It's it's a lot slower and it's a lot more dangerous, I would say. So, um, so yeah, we can set up RTSR here while waiting for this this uh dude. So yeah, you just do a sprint attack and an R2, and that'll be R2 star. And then you're gonna want to heal about now, like so. You, you basically just watch your health. And when you're running past this guy, like see how he starts to block. Like you want to sit on this side of the of this gate until he starts to block, and then you can just run past him. Like he just doesn't do anything. So and then your R2 star will continue to be set up. There it is. Obviously, you have to equip it, but I'll do it right before the boss. You can even get your armor on. <clears throat> and there's no statue here on Scholar there is, which is annoying. You can just do a sprint attack here to fall down correctly. Up this ladder. Yeah, if those of you familiar with Scholar and the enemy placements will notice there's way fewer enemies in, in these areas, right? Like, there's just nobody almost. Like, there's normally in Scholar a guy right against the fence there. Or right against the ladder, that's really annoying. So. Okay, so this fight, um, we're gonna use... I guess you could use magic, I don't know. Probably doesn't matter. Um, and I don't believe we need a bright bug, so we're just gonna buff. You know, make sure you have RTSR, flins, and blades on. I like to keep cat ring on, just in case I, like, fall down or something, but... So yeah, I'm gonna make a save here, and then this is what you'll do. So you run around this guy, he'll, he'll do the same opener every time. You do four hits, and then you're going to circle around him again. Just finish him off. And what you can do here is is get a few arrows in. I actually, I, I would normally use fire arrows, but just get like, I think three arrows is probably fine. Basically, we want to kill this guy right away. So right when he jumps up, start spamming away. He's dead. So yeah, this corner here is a safe spot. So when they jump up, it won't hit you. And, uh... Yeah, right when they jump, you can start attacking. On this guy, I would only attack, uh, like, three times, and then circle around him again, just like the first one. He drops down. It's not the end of the world. You can just drop down with him. And it's... It, honestly, I would say that Ruin Sentinels are... With this amount of damage, it's a it's an easier fight than Flexile Sentry probably is, which is, like, that's that's saying something, dude. Like, that's impressive. But with this much damage, the fight is so easy. Uh... And it's way faster. And and the wharf is not a fun area too. Like the wharf is a is a tricky area to go through on no hit sometimes. So you can just go this way. Go kill Flexile, you get the or go kill Rune Sentinels, you get the exact same aesthetic. And yeah. But yeah, again, run around this guy. Four hits is good. Strafe around him. Get your three arrows off on this guy. With this amount of stamina, it's probably actually unnecessary to do this these arrows, but... Just wait, you'll see he does like a shuffle and then he'll jump up. But yeah, it's, just, it's really just so easy. And you could try to shoot this guy too if you wanted. I wonder if I can just kill this guy right away here. Maybe with an R2 you could, but... Yeah, just, I mean, you just strafe around them. Honestly, there's not much to say here. I guess some of the, some of the, the strafes you have to be a bit careful of, especially the, the slower kind of horizontal. 
It's a bit more of a specific position you have to be in. This is plus four rapier still, yeah. Plus four the whole run until we get the key. But they did, I, I think the first one did the, the attack, or maybe, I don't know. I'll just try to get it again. Yeah, really, just, it's such a simple boss. Like, it only starts to get a little bit tricky when you have lower damage than this. Or like, like, significantly lower damage. But, yeah. For this, yeah, like, all the attacks, you just walk to the side, and it's... It's just, on the, on the, like, the slower one, you have to rotate a bit more. Is, is the one thing that you have to watch out for. All right, so again, you go to this corner. Wait for the jump. I guess it's five hits. I'm gonna, you could maybe just go for this too. These arrows, I don't know. It's a bit harder to hit them when he's like this position. But look, I got them all, so I guess I just kill. I guess you could try that. I don't know if this will work every single time. But there you go. And of course, I still have the cat ring on uh, for that drop, and then I'll switch to the serpent ring. Get those extra souls, and that it, it's it's really just that easy. Not actually switch back to the cat ring again here, or heal. You have an option: cat ring or heal. Because we're gonna be doing a drop up here. Yeah, so you just run through here. Um, this is where maybe having some extra bones would be nice, because we're gonna need three bones on the rotten, right? So. Um, what I normally do in my run is dark sign here. There's actually a guy up here. We have to kill him. Like, after picking up this aesthetic, I would normally dark sign. And that's what I'm going to do here. But you could just buy some extra bones earlier and then not dark sign. Like, if you wanted to keep this extra 50k souls. I'm actually going to pop this soul, too. So it'd be a bit more than 50k. So you could, you could do that if you wanted to. Now, these guys, you can just use wooden arrows on them. Like the ones we bought earlier. Kill them all. Now we can just sprint through the rest of this part. So run around the side of this, up the stairs. And again, make sure you're healed or have cat ring on. Open this door. You don't have to worry about these guys. Uh, and then just drop down the center. Like right down the center. Because you can actually run into that chain. It has collision and it'll slow down your sprint. You'll miss. So so yeah, that's important. And yeah, we're, I, I'm going to dark sign here. Uh, you can buy some more bones earlier. Like maybe even just one more bone would be fine. But we, like, the thing is, we get to such a high level in this run that the souls actually aren't that important. And yeah, we're about to go kill the last three Rottens here, so. We watch some more Rotten fights. Our damage, you'll see, like, we're only plus four, but now we're going to start in introducing RTSR and Flynn's Ring. And, uh, of course, burn the ascetic here. You can actually burn the ascetic when you're, like, after you, uh, well, actually, never mind. But yeah, burn the ascetic here. Get to NG+. Plus. Um, and then I usually like to use a bright bug on the last, on the last rotten, because it's the tankiest one. So, so yeah, I usually save the bright bug. Make sure you got your serpent ring equipped here. You don't obviously need cat ring here, so. And yeah, I use bones here just to save on the souls, right? Like three rotten fights, three bones. Um, and I'll show you the RTSR setup. So how you set up RTSR in this, and it's, you have to be careful while doing it. But so go into the fight and then immediately run into this. And then set up our two like that. You have to be a bit careful. Because, first of all, you can easily stay in, in the lava for too long or whatever it is. I don't even know what it is. But you can easily stay in, in, in the lava for too long. And you also don't want to roll. Like, you don't really want to roll when you're coming out of the lava. Because, like, if, if the Rotten's doing, like, some attack and, you know, you have to roll it. Like, you can't really roll very quickly in this game, right? So... Another thing to watch out for, actually, he can, like, he can hit you with the nub. He can hit you with that. Um, so just keep your distance. He can also follow up attacks with it, too. Which is really weird, but he can. So just pay attention to that. And Yeah, you just bone out immediately, basically. Or maybe that's too early. I don't know. We'll see. It shouldn't be too early. Just bone out basically right away. And then use your next ascetic. And then just repeat that three times. And it, you'll see our damage is crazy, right? A plus four weapon, and it's just melting the boss. Yep, 
Use the resin. Very important to make sure you have all your soul boosting gear on for this. So yeah, sit in the lava here and get out. Like, don't roll out whatever, you know. Going for the arm. Arm. Just have to be like the the thing to watch out for in this fight. Of course, when you're using RTSR, is that the lava will kill you if you step into it by accident. Right. So you have to be quite aware of your of your positioning and the positioning of like the the lava. Because yeah, that like you you don't want to die, right? So. Yeah, it's a very, very simple fight here. But yeah, just make sure you have this on. Like, it sucks when you're doing runs and you're like, you get past the Rottens and you're like, okay, I'm going into the, like, kind of the second branch of the game or the second half of the game and like, oh, I did make it to a million soul memory because I forgot my, like, Serpent Ring or something. So. Yep, okay, let's go kill the last one. And I, I'm going to use a Bright Bug here. I think I normally do. I, I honestly don't know. I will, though. I'll use it. I think I normally do. But you could save it if you wanted to, I guess. <laughs> don't do that. But cancel the resin animation for extra speed. Don't actually do that, because that is a hit. But RT, sir. Like, you see, our, our damage does start to drop off a little bit, so. Yeah, always arm hits, outspacing stuff. I think it's just the best way to fight the Rotten. And again, you can roll into this one, but you can also just do that. And watch the lava. But with RTSR. The first time we didn't use RTSR, so it didn't matter. I'm actually far enough out on that one that I couldn't really just strafe around it, so. But yeah, if you break the arm heal, of course, never do that attack. So yeah, you're you're gonna get good at this fight basically eventually because you gotta fight him so many times. Here we go, we got the double arm break. And now we can't really do anything. Yeah, this is NG plus three round right here. And then you'll see we're since we killed Dragon Rider, we're actually gonna be quite a bit above a million, like probably by fifteen or so thousand. But yeah, that's not a problem, like. This makes it everything easier when you're killing Dragon Rider. You also get some more levels and stuff. So. If I was going for pure speed, there's no way I would do it, though. Yeah, so we're going to pop these. I mean, you'll see, these are a significant amount of souls, so... We should get to above a million here, right? So, 1.02 million. So, 20, 20k extra. Um, so, now we're going to buy Bright Bugs. Buy the three Bright Bugs here. Thanks. Um, you can actually... You can buy the Cestus here if you wanted... That is an option. I'm actually gonna do it. I'll just show you what you can do with them. You can fight. You can fight. Uh, Mirror Knight with the, the the Cestus, and it sounds crazy. Like the unupgraded Cestus, dude. They're fucking. They're insane. Like, they attack so quickly, and we're gonna be leveling up strength here. And they they're really good. So, normally I would not level up ADP here. I usually just do this run with 11 iframes instead of going to 105, which is again 13. So, yeah, what I normally do here is 40 dex, 40 strength, and 40 endurance. But, yeah, if you want more iframes, um, and I, I'm probably going to be a bit short of 40 here. Oh, no, I'm not. If, if you want a bit more iframes, you can sacrifice, you know, you can sacrifice endurance, you know, just, you know, maybe a bit of strength and, like, try to get your way up. And it's not a big, it's really not a big deal. Just, like, go a bit lower strength and... I don't know how many points I would need. Like this, I guess. You can do this. That's fine. Um, if you want to get to 105. I wouldn't... I would never go above 105 for any percent. There's just no point. But yeah, we'll go... We'll, I, I usually stay at 11 iframes. You don't really need more in this game, so... Oh, I actually forgot about something. <laughs> Whoops. Um, I should have saved... Uh, that extra level that I put in, I was kind of wondering why I had it, but those are for arrows, and I kind of just completely forgot. So you'd want to save, you would want to, like, hold back one level up here, and then, uh, 
and then buy the arrows coming up. I'll just like cheat engine some souls or something. But yeah, you would want to save maybe roughly like 20k. 15k. Like they're really not that expensive, but uh Yeah, it's important that you you buy those, so. Let me see if I can uh give myself some souls here because I messed up. But yeah, the levels aren't that important. Like they're I, I know a lot of people like when they're following routes and stuff, they, they really care about remembering all the levels and stuff and like having it exactly as they saw it. But it's really like that's not Honestly, for any run, that's not uh, that's not something that's super important. So, um, yeah. Okay, where are my souls at here? Okay, I'll just get myself. There we go. But even twenty k is like more than you probably need. Obviously, we don't need this armor anymore. Um, I won't put on the cat ring yet, because we're actually gonna... I'll just show you a little trick you can do with RTSR up here, but... Yeah, just sprint through these guys. Um, on Scholar, there's a bunch of annoying, like, fucking falconer knights. They're super annoying, so... You'd have to kill them on Scholar, but on this, you just run past everything here. There is one... There's a chance that that flexile sentry can do a jump attack, which you would have to roll. I've only seen it once, though, to be fair, so... Yeah, just sprint through everything. Now, what you can do up here is set up R2-Star with a jump. There's actually, like, no point in doing it, but... You'd, you'd want to get all of your armor on and, uh... Basically just jump like this, I guess. You want to jump down here. This... Yeah, and you could do this. Um, of course, you you could just set up with the Sanctum Mace. And what's really nice now is that we can actually wield the Sanctum Mace effectively. So, uh... Yeah, you can do that setup, which is a bit faster. Or you could just use the Sanctum Mace and, you know... Use your Estus and whatever. Okay, uh, this part, there's a couple archers. You just, you, you're gonna want to roll this guy on the right. So there's a guy on the right here. Just roll his attack. And these archers, like, I would look back at them. Make sure they're not shooting a uh, cross bolt at you. Or bolt at you, because they, you know, they can do that and they'll hit you, so... Just look back. We don't need this lizard. You, I guess you could if you wanted to like upgrade the bow a bit more, but let's say it's unnecessary. Um, here, you probably could poison. Like you can determine where you want to use your poison stuff. You could also use the the poisoning throwing knives here on these guys. Um, and this is one thing. This is where like things start to get a little bit worse than in Scholar. Like this is the first thing that's probably worse than in Scholar. Everything else has been better so far. But yeah, this is a bit annoying. And Scholar, you can completely ignore these mammoth dudes because they're like down here. And then they also can't walk past a certain point. But in this game, they can walk, you know, all the way up to the door. And they, you actually have to deal with them, basically. So um, there's, there's also still the archers behind them. So what you want to do is make sure that you're not coming too far up and just like snipe this guy. Like get your first shot on him. You'll notice the damage is really high because we do have a plus seven longbow you can just like you can just snipe them you don't need to use poison i probably wouldn't normally use poison here because it doesn't actually speed it up that much because their damage is so good but on maybe like a lower damage run you'd want to use poison here so yeah not an issue for for this though we've got plenty of damage okay so now um how i normally do these guys is the first one you just shoot shoot him from back here and like you you want to make sure that you're there's like a line be, or the, this pillars between you and this other guy just so he doesn't accidentally like take a shot at you or something and then this guy usually shoot one time and that'll get his health set up and then i would sit here um and wait for him to shoot and like a lot of time he'll shoot twice so just like dodge a shot but when he's done shooting i i like to go in here Right, so go in, and then he pulls his weapon, and then charge a shot, and then when he gets close, you just shoot him again. That's usually what I would do. And then also, what you're also going to want to do here is run over here, bait these guys, because there's two guys that are going to spawn, and then you're just going to run down here. And this this makes it so that they de-aggro, and they'll, like, go away, and so they, they don't follow you when you're trying to buy arrows or something. Like, so you see they turn around. 
Um, yeah. So that, that's how I do this part. It's like, it is a bit trickier than it is on, on Scholar, but... Not a problem. Like, in Scholar, there's actually strat. You just, like, shoot this guy a couple times, and then he'll be in range of that. You can actually, you can do that here, but... Uh, with, with like, two-shotting him, you wouldn't push him far back enough. And plus, we don't have Stone Ring either, so... That's why I usually do it that way. Okay, now we've got our souls. We're gonna buy... You can just buy, like, 100 of each arrow type or 200 or whatever. Like, we don't need souls anymore on the run. So... And yeah, just go through all of his dialogue and just buy... Like, you can even, like, I don't know. I usually buy some of both, but I guess it's faster to just buy one type. It really doesn't matter. Like, magic is slightly better on certain things and lightning slightly better on others, but... Yeah, just buy those. I can jump over this to save a bit of time. Also, you can put on Cat Ring here. Also, this guy, it's important to run, like, go left and then cut right when you're dodging past him. And then you can just run past this guy. Like, just so you don't get trapped in the wall. So you're going to roll through this, drop right down here. I usually like to switch to my lightning arrow during this. And that's where, again, sprinting while menuing is useful. And you'll notice you you can get one or two guys climbing down here to chase you. I just, I just kill them. In this case, we only got one, I believe, so... Okay, like, so here you can use the Cestus if you want. Like, I, I, I bought them. Like, it's unnecessary. Like, you can just use the Rapier for these guys, but these guys are way weaker to strike damage. These guys that you have to kill up here, so... I mean, I'll just... I, I just wanted to show that Cestus is an option, and you could use it on Mirror Knight if you want, so... Um, I'll use the Rapier first. So, you want to kill this guy on the left first. Right, so he takes four hits, and this guy takes, like... Like, see, it's... It, it's actually... A bit dangerous doing it like this, man. I'll, I'll show Cestus here now. I guess you, if you wanted to use Rapier, you could just use a Resin here or something. And you'd probably kill him in two hits with maybe R2s or something. But I'll show the Cestus here because it, it is better. I like guess probably like two hits to kill him, I think. And it's unupgraded, so it's just because they're very weak to strike. But yeah, you can definitely, like, not buy them. But I think I normally do. I don't know. I can't remember. I have them in my notes, so. <clears throat> and yeah, we do have 40 strength, right? So, um, I'll show the Cestus here. Right, like, look at look at the scaling. Like, that's what I'm talking about. 45 base, plus 238. Because we have really good strength, really good dex. As opposed to the Rapier, right? So, so like, check this damage out. Unupgraded. And you just do that, and it's super easy. The reason why you kill the guy on the left first is because it, it, it's not really that important in, in, in an any percent run. Like, you can kill the guy on the right first, I guess. But the reason is because if you kill the guy on the right first and then the guy on the left, it'll open that door. And if you're doing, like, all bosses or something, like, you don't really want that door open for when you come back here later for Dark Lurker. So that, that's the reason. Just good practice to kill the guy on the left first. Oh, yeah, and there's, like, a little strat you can do up here, actually. Um, I I don't know what these stats, actually, if I'm going to be able to kill... Um, let's let's test this out. First of all, there's a, there's a little tricky room you have to get through here first, but... Make a save here. Um, this room is actually annoying. On Scholar, nothing happens in this room you just run through, but on this, you'll see what happens, so... I'll show what I do first, and then I'll explain it after, so... Like, see, so you get your... These are traps. And they, uh, obviously they hit you, so kind of a specific way you want to roll through this room. Um, and I'll explain, like, what I do. So I open the door, and I don't roll through it, you'll notice. Um, I open the door until it's fully done, until I come out of the animation, and then I roll to a slight angle to the left. And then I roll directly left towards the other door, like, immediately after, so... Yeah, exactly. Scholar, yeah, you have to trigger the traps with the chest. And they all start firing, I believe. But yeah, so I open the door. See, I'll tilt the camera a tiny bit left here. And then you start walking, kind of roll immediately, and then you roll again. So it's pretty straightforward. Now, here, I, I don't know if I have the stats for this, but you can actually one-shot this guy with a headshot. Okay, I do, right? So this is one of the advantages of, I guess, not leveling up ADP more. I one-shot this guy, which is kind of nice, because he kind of wanders around when you start walking up here. And you can also kill this guy. And then what you can also do to make this even more safe is kill this guy. 
So three, you know, headshots, and then and then it's it's super easy running through here. Um, completely safe, like just like Scholar. Like this this area is actually harder in Scholar, like or easier in Scholar. There's no enemies in this room in Scholar, and I believe there might be only be one archer or something up there. But yeah, so you can do this to make it a little bit more. Uh, a little bit safer it's still very consistent even if you don't kill anybody and that's like on basically every other run i do i don't don't kill people i'll show i'll try to run through like that there's also kind of a weird meme though when you're doing this strat where this guy will aggro right away like right as you come out of the door like i didn't roll through the door but i have seen it before i believe and you can either just like wait for him to come out and like try to snipe him again or you can kind of just go like but yeah, so yeah, you can do the, all this and then you can just sprint through this room and uh, and just sprint through as you normally would on like on a scholar run or something like this guy back here. Just, you know, keep an eye on what he's doing and then you run to the boss. So also, I guess it's something to, to note is that the invader that we killed earlier, uh, Lysia, she would invade here. Um, but it's never a problem. Like, that's not why we would kill her, basically. It's the it's the next invasion that's actually a slight concern, which I'll explain when we get there, so. You see, we're at 50 minutes, 58 minutes here. It's That's very slow for this route, but this route is about a 110. 110, 115. So it's pretty efficient. It's not bad at all. I mean, you could do it in, like, 10. You could do it in a low one hour if you wanted to, but... Um, talk about that later, I guess. So yeah, get in this room, a bit to the left. Do this. I'll show what this is like without killing this guy. So what I normally would do is come sit here. And then you're going to want to bait an attack from this guy and then go behind him. And this is what I do on basically all my runs. Because most of my runs I can't kill these guys. And then you're just going to, you know, run past here. You, you need to be quite aware of, like, what's happening, because it, it's, it's not going to be the same every time, right? So, um, you just, yeah, like, if, if you're not going to kill them, like, if you don't have the stats to one-shot this guy with a headshot, and the reason I say, like, it's important to have the stats to one-shot him is because, like, if he's aggroed and he starts walking around, like, he can just go behind a pillar and just never come out, basically, so, yeah. Like, you can still try if you're not going to one-shot them. But it just, it'll make it better if you can one-shot him, so. Yeah, here's what I mean here. Like, so it didn't matter, I guess, but see how he started moving there? Like, he aggroed for a second. It's just something to pay attention to. Yeah, this will make this area completely free doing this strat, so. You just run through. Really nice, actually. Watch out for this guy. Like that, I guess. Clipped me in the foot, dude. You can even kill him if you want, I guess. No reason why you couldn't. You could even snipe him, I guess. I usually don't. But you could. All right, next we're going into Dragon Riders. So, um, this boss is really easy, but um, there's just, I, I guess there's a few things you have to look out for on the Dragon Riders. And it has mainly to do with killing killing the first guy and, you know, maintaining the right distance. Like, you want to be point blank. I'll explain it when I get into the fight, but it's, it's, it's quite straightforward. It's just, you know, as, as are most of the bosses in this, in this, uh, in this run. Okay, so Dragon Riders, um, gonna want to buff. Oh, so I guess I've seen a lot of people, like, this is something to note here, because here's where it's actually important. So see how I have the bow in my left hand and the rapier in my right? Like, I would definitely recommend this over going, like, rapier in right hand and also bow in the right hand, and it's because you can buff 
Right, so say I buff my rapier here, but then I can also, like, put away the rapier and still use the bow and then still have the buff maintained on the rapier, right? So that's that's the benefit of doing it um, like this, like having your left hand bow, right hand rapier. So this fight, you're going to come in. Uh, I mean, our damage is going to be so high, it probably doesn't even matter what we do, but take a shot at this guy. Strafe around this guy and then just finish him off, like, and that's it. And the only thing you have to watch out for is being too far away from that archer guy when he's shooting. Um, because he can clip you, like, in the head, right? And then for this guy, literally just... If you're if you're at this position, there's no attack he has that will hit you. Right, so you just, you just literally circle around and... Like, that's the whole fight. Hopefully I made a save file there. Um, <clears throat> you can also, like, write... Like, so you'll notice maybe that I kind of ran into the fog gate and then ran kind of almost halfway into the arena and then shot my first arrow you can shoot it right at the fog gate but i think the problem that can arise with that is um you you i guess i'll, I'll show i'll show what i mean in a second but you can sometimes be a bit slow killing the first guy oh i guess i did make a safe fall. i'll just do this again like you can some and what I mean by being slow is like you're gonna be out of the range or you, 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 like you're gonna be too far away and then he's gonna like snipe you in the head or something, right? That's what I mean. Yeah, being able to kill these guys though that this like easily just makes this area so much easier. And then yeah, I guess you could shoot this guy here. Like I don't see why you couldn't. So, you could do that. Make it even safer. Um, okay. So, I'll actually make a save this time. And yeah, but I, I guess I'll also mention that we're going to be using the Dark Shine for the rest of the run. You don't need bones, right? We don't, we're not going to level up anymore, so. Um, so yeah, what I mean is the, the Dragon Rider can sometimes drop on the far left. Like, maybe he'll do it. Okay, he's gonna he's doing it here. So, I'm gonna run around this guy. And see, look, how I'm a little bit slower getting to him. And I, I think it just makes it a bit easier if... Um, it's, it's, I'm very convenient that it happened that time. But I think it makes it a bit easier if you walk into the boss arena a little bit further. And that way, if he does go to this far side when you're, you know, coming around... Um, there's just no chance that you're gonna be too far away for the arrow to hit you, basically. Like, there's just no possible way. And it, it probably wouldn't happen even if you, like, did it from the fog gate. But I think it just gives you a bit more time. So, that's why I I actually recently started doing that for SO1 no upgrades. Because that, like, I needed more time killing the guy. Because I had a little bit less damage. So. And I forgot to make a save file again somehow. And, okay, that's what happens when you roll in directly, by the way. That's why you don't do that. I don't know how I forgot to make another one, but... I showed what I wanted to show, so. And you guys get to see, like, each strat here a number of times. Yeah, it is quite consistent running through like this. You just have to be a little bit more aware of everything. Yeah, that's, uh, that's this fight. I mean, very straightforward. It's just, it's just the opening is the only thing that you have to even worry slightly about. And yeah, I'll show what I, this is what I this is what I started doing. So I, I would like run into the boss a little bit, and then shoot this. And it just gives you more time. So when you strafe around this guy, like he'll just be landing, and it's no problem. Yeah, just circle this guy like this, and he just won't hit you. Like that's the fight. Yeah, very straightforward boss. Alright, now this part... This part is significantly easier, actually, in vanilla compared to Scholar. And we're gonna use the Cestus again. And it's because this room... So, yeah, so you like that bonfire, first of all. Uh, this room is uh, is so easy in this version of the game compared to, compared to Scholar where you have to, like, go bait out a mannequin and, like bait them over here it's it's, it's kind of dangerous because they're really uh unpredictable enemies but what you do in vanilla is you simply just run up to this guy 
you kill him, and then you just kill this guy. And that's it. That's the whole thing. Now, a little trick that you can do here is um, you can time this bone. So when you watch his hand movements, when he re-grips it, so here, you can bone, and that'll actually save some time. I'll show you what I mean in a second. So you see, right when we get down to this bonfire, this elevator will start moving right away. Right, so it's moving. Um, like, no delay or anything. If you bone, like, early there, it's not a problem, but basically he just has to go through that entire animation again before this starts moving. So it's just a bit faster if you time it there. But it, it's no problem. Like, you can bone at any point after he gets the soul, and it'll work. Like, so, it's not like it's a, a precise thing to do, but this just saves a bit of time. And then you'll wait here until, uh... So you go up, and then you, we're gonna get the key for this door. The most unnecessary elevator and door ever. And then, yeah, we'll continue. Yeah, and so, Mirror Knight, you can use the Rapier or the Cestus on him. I, I prefer the Rapier, I'll say that. But, um... The Cestus is a totally valid option as well. I'll show this Cestus fight. Like, the Cestus fight, I believe, is actually faster. And and then there's also, like... There's a little AI manipulation you can do with Mirror Knight. And it's, I wouldn't say it's little, I guess. It's very significant. It makes the fight a complete joke on any run. Any run where you have enough damage to pull it off. And it is damage-based. Which I'll demonstrate. And you're going to want to fight Mirror Knight like that. Like, you, honestly, you do not need to know a single move that he has. Actually, you, you don't need to know more than one move. There's one move you have to know. And that's it. Or maybe like two, I guess. Yeah, grab the key, dark sign. Now all these enemies here, you just you just sprint past. You just go right to the fog gate. There's an extra enemy, see there's a, a knight there who's not there in the scholar, but it doesn't matter. So, yeah, I'll make a save here. I'll show this fight uh, with both weapon options. And it, I would say it comes down to preference. Like, they're quite similar. Um, but, yeah, no bright bug or anything on this fight. Just sprint through here. Yeah, just run around this guy. There's no attack that will hit you if you just run around like that. Now, what you do on this opening is you run to basically where he jumped. And then you're going to buff. You're going to outspace his first attack. So bait it, out space, and then come in for a couple hits. One, two, three. You get another one here. And then you strafe around this one, back up a bit. One, two, three, four. Two hits during this, and then again strafe. And then you just spam him, and then he should be dead here. He's going to do it again. And that's it. Like, and that, that's the AI manipulation I'm talking about. So if you deal enough damage... Um, during, like, in between he, like, in between him doing kind of, I don't know what to call it, I guess, is like his weapon art or whatever, like his lightning attacks. Um, if you do enough damage, he'll always just do it again. For some reason, right? So the fight just becomes so easy, you just strafe around, and, uh, and yeah, that's what you do. And you can do the same thing with the Cestus as well, it's just a bit different. Like, I, I, I personally prefer the Rapier because it's, it's you know, thrusting rather than like horizontal swings. But the the Cessus have such a little range that it actually is, is very nice here. Like it doesn't make a difference really. But yeah, and, and the number of hits I did on that last fight, it's not it's not like super specific or anything. Like you don't need to do the exact same number of hits on each thing. Like it's very lenient, but yeah, so you see this damage here. Straight around. Right? You just go to town because the stamina consumption is so low. So this is a faster fight. Like, he's dead here. Right? So it's so easy. But it's very similar. So you can you can pick which one you prefer. Again, I kind of prefer the Rapier. Um, yeah, that's an unupgraded Cestus right there. Yeah, and that's what I mean. That's why, like, the Cestus is, is really an option to use here. Like, it's really good. It, it is better. It is it is faster. But it, it also doesn't really make a huge difference if you use the Rapier. Like, the Rapier is totally fine, too, so. 
And yeah, you could run around either side on this guy too, I guess. Doesn't really matter. So again, run to where you jump from, buff, outspace this first attack, and then get into the loop. And you'll always do this as the opener. So, couple hits. And again, it's not, it's not, like I said earlier, it's not super specific the number of hits you have to do at each point. You just want to be watching your stamina. Right, so I didn't, I chose to not do a hit, you know, when he charged up this time, but I'm going to just go in. I'm going to spam him. Okay, I don't actually know why he just did this. Interesting. But yeah, that's that's the idea. Like, you just, you get him low enough. I, I actually have no idea why he just did that, though. That's kind of concerning. Maybe that's a good case for the, the Cestus or something, but... Probably just had to do with when I was doing the attacks. I'll do it one more time just to show that's actually consistent. I do this on every single run. Like, you're going to want to be doing this on every single run. Even a run like S1 no upgrades, I do this. Like, there's enough damage that you can get him down most of his health before he breaks out of it. Because he will break out of it eventually. Uh, so. So, yeah. I think it actually might have to do with doing hits at, like, I think you want to do the hits before the charge. Like, that actually might be necessary. So you can do, like, two and then two here. And then, like, I don't know, one, two, three. And then, like, regenerate stamina. Do a, another two before. Like, it's probably a, maybe a bit more of a consistent way to do it. And he should charge it here. Like, I, yeah. And then you just finish him off. So that, that, the way I just did that there is probably a more consistent way of doing it. Instead of just, like, spamming at certain intervals there. I'd say if you're going to use Rapier, that's how you should do the fight right there. Because you do have to be a bit more careful with stamina. So like three hits and then wait for him to go into the, the charge up or whatever and then do two hits and then repeat. Like strafe, repeat. Yeah, so so Mirror Knight is, is super easy when you can do that uh, AI, AI manipulation. But he becomes like kind of a tricky boss if you can't. Like his moveset is... Uh, like, it's not the easiest, you know? Like, a lot of it's, his attacks move you around. And, like, you can get dragged by him. And if you have, like, lower iframes, then it could be a problem, so. So, yeah, that's, that just takes a little bit of practice, but, uh. Yeah, so here, um, you, just, you can just run down these stairs like normal. You could also just, like, do that, I guess. But, or you can just run down the stairs like normal. It doesn't, like, quite unnecessary. Um. Now, uh, here, like, this is where, like, Stone Ring maybe could do something, but it's so unnecessary. Like, there's, it, it takes probably, like, a minute and a half to go get it, and it's just completely not worth it. So, what you're going to want to do on this guy, headshot, body shot, like, we have such good damage, it's just unnecessary. But you'll, you'll notice, like, he didn't get staggered in a single shot there, but if I had Stone Ring, he would have, so... But yeah, so you kill this guy. Um, you're also going to kill this guy over here. Just sprint attacks into them. Uh, there's a guy in here. Just lock on. Two shots. Um, I'd like to snipe this guy as well. And now, yeah, the, so you'll people familiar with Scholar will start to see the difference already in this area. These three guys are standing still, and they're always there. Like, they don't path around like in Scholar, um, which is very convenient because it makes it much easier to go through here. So, yeah, again, just headshot, body shot. You just do it for all of them. And they, and they don't aggro. It's not like they all start aggroing when you shoot one, right? So, I mean, they don't do that in Scholar either, but it's just nice when they're all sitting still, and it's super easy to get your shots off, and you're not going to miss either, right? Like, that's why in Scholar getting Stone Ring is a bit more of a consideration. Like, it's a bit more worth it because, you know, if you miss a shot and they get close to you somehow, then that maybe could be a problem. But yeah, they're just standing still here, so. There's 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 absolutely no point in getting Stone Ring. Now this part, shoot this first girl. I think they're two hits. Should be two hits. Um, we're also going to shoot this girl on the right. And you just take this path. There's there's way less enemies through here. It's very nice. In Scholar, there's like a 
dude here. There's like a mage, two mages up there. There's like a mage in here. Um, we just kill this girl. And then we're gonna kill this girl as we come across. Now we're actually gonna come through this way. Um, in Scholar, you would normally run around that way, but it's you don't want to go that way on vanilla. You want to come this way. And once we get to about here, you want to kill this girl. Like, this area is so straightforward. Like, it's so easy. Um, and we're going to kill this girl. And that's actually it. That's all the enemies we have to kill in, in this area. In vanilla. And you might be like, oh, there's fucking three guys right in front of the gate. That's the beaut the beautiful thing is that we can literally just fucking walk right past them. So once you get to about this point, um, I use keyboard for this, but you can you can like slow walk on your controller, right? Just do this. I use keyboard, so hitting Alt and W will make you slow walk, and I just I just go on keyboard here and I just slow walk past them. And look, they just they just don't even aggro. Just hug the wall, slow walk past them. It's so nice. And that's it. You just go right past them. And that, like, Amana is so much easier in, in, in vanilla DS2. Okay, so now we're going to kill this dude. You can actually melee this guy, but I would just, I would just snipe him down. Um, yeah, and so once, once he's dead, you're going to come through here and kind of immediately snipe this, uh, first girl. If, if she gets a shot off, like if you, you can, you can come to here if you want and then start shooting her if you're scared of the mushrooms or something. You can just like walk beside her attack, like she'll shoot a projectile, you just like walk next to it. And it's, it's honestly, it's super easy. Kill this one. And then that's all, that's all the enemies we have to kill here. So we're going to walk around, along this path here. And just sprint past her. If you, if you like go close to her, she'll do a melee attack, so. Yeah, and that's it. And like she'll shoot, but. Like, it gets blocked, and there's no invader here like there is on Scholar. It's super easy. So, now Demon of Song. Um, there's literally one thing you have to worry about on this fight, and it's the, the quick hop. Which, I, I could do this fight for a few hours, and he probably won't do it. Maybe maybe we'll get lucky and he'll do it here or something, but he probably won't. But generally, you just sit in front of him. And, uh, oh, man, I, I really wish he does it. I re really wish he would do it, but yeah, you just outspace his attack and just spam him. And don't hit the fucking skin because you'll bounce off and deal way less damage. Or deal no damage. So, you yeah, just outspace the attacks, go in, get off like a full stamina bar. I'd love to see a hop. But basically, he's got one attack that's ultra fast. It's really fast, especially when you've never seen it before. Um. It is very fast, and it will probably end a run the first time you see it. Probably. But if you sit in this fight for a few hours, you'll, you'll get it a few times for sure, so. Um, basically, the quick hop, you just roll. Like, you don't even need to worry about where you're rolling to. Like, you just roll, and that's why I'm also constantly moving. Like, I guess I should explain when it comes. It comes when he, uh, when he doesn't have his face out, or I guess she comes when she doesn't have her face out like when she's got the thing the skin over her face um that's when it can happen right so i'll explain I'll, I'll show when it can happen here like so during this it can happen right and that's why i'm always moving here so that i don't get caught like not having my stick moving so that i have time to react and hit b this attack you just walk back and Go back in. If I did this properly, I probably would have gotten the kill, but yeah, so you just gotta do the fight enough to see it, I think. But honestly, it's very unlikely to happen on an actual run, but <clears throat> it it it's happened before. Okay, so Demon of Song, um, now we get our main weapon. So we've been using the plus four rapier this whole time. It's good, but it's not as good as this thing. Key to the embedded is a absolutely monster weapon. Um, and that's, you know, we've got 40 strength, 40 dex. Uh, so we got good scaling on it. And the reason why it's so good is because, first of all, its base damage is insane, right? 
220 base damage is very high. <clears throat> Especially for something that swings at, like, decent speed. But it's the counter rating. So, um, that 150 you see down there on the right, that's the counter rating of a weapon. The rapier's got 140, which is very high. This thing's got 150, which is just absolutely wild. So, that's why this thing is so good, basically. And you'll see the damage. But, I mean, I guess you could go with the rapier, but, uh, this is just, this is just better, so. Yeah, we're gonna want to go with this thing. And I'm actually gonna use the rapier up here for a second, but, uh, yeah, no enemies here in vanilla, which is very nice. Like, no shield guys blocking the doors or anything. Um, so there's three enemies in here, though, so we're gonna want to kill them. Just three headshots. I guess it probably doesn't even need to be three headshots. So you kill the first girl in the middle. Um, you kill this girl on the left. And she'll, like, start moving over, so. I wish I could hit her. But yeah, if if, if she gets us off, it's not, not a problem. You just kind of hide yourself away here. Now this guy, kill. This guy, kill. And then you're going to kill the last one here. And I'm using magic arrows here because they, they are slightly better, but... Honestly, it doesn't even matter. Like, I'm sure lightning would still be three hits anyway. So, once they're all dead, we can just run past these guys. Um, up here, you can buy dark arrows if you want. Uh, it, it's it's pretty unnecessary because you can just use lightning on the enemies. It, it, the, you, the reason you buy dark arrows is for the enemies in... Um in uh, Dragon Airy, but there's honestly no point. Like, you can buy them if you want some extra damage, I guess, but just use magic. It's fine. Now here, um, we're just gonna dodge past these guys. On th This is the only attack from this guy that you have to roll. All the other ones, you just walk around that way. You won't have to roll, but that's the only one you do have to roll. Come through here. Um, You can just kind of go through these rocks on this point here. Let's do that, and then we're gonna break the rocks here. Just go around. Now, this is the area where um, the Lycia would invade, and this could actually be a problem. The reason you can, like, get away with not killing her is because if you're fast enough through here, like, she won't catch up and it's fine. But yeah, this is where she would invade if we didn't kill her. And what we're going to do is run uh, to this one. So I, I guess I go, like, th so one, two, three, past that ghost guy. It's not, like, that specific, but we're going to shoot above one of these guys. It actually doesn't really matter which one. I usually do this guy, and you're going to want to shoot, like, pretty high up, and kind of right... Like, so see, he's got the thing in the middle here, like, where the doors meet, like, kind of up here. Um, and you can, like, and you have all the time. Oh, that's actually exactly what you don't want to do. Um, but yeah, just, like, shoot, like, it's actually a bit higher, like, somewhere up here. And you, and, and you have all the time in the world to just kind of, like, mess around with this. Uh, because you're not invaded, but... The reason you don't want to get invaded is because if you miss, like, one shot here, then you're probably going to get caught up. Um, like, she's probably going to catch up to you. So that's that's why we kill her, basically. But if if, if you're going to not miss an arrow here, then, uh, then you don't have to worry about it, so. I guess I should split two. Yep, so. it's it, Yeah, you have all the time in the world, basically, so. It's no problem. Unless, unless you don't kill her, but I would recommend killing her probably for the first run. Just sit before this one, shoot the arrow, turns around, and then you just run past. That's it. Just run through all this. Now, so here we actually have a relatively new strat, and like, and it's very new, actually. It's, I started doing this, uh, I guess, like, three days ago, maybe, uh, for S01 No Upgrades. But this is, um, this is probably, the way we used to do this is the least consistent part in the run, and it's very, it's still very consistent, but there's probably, like, a 5% or less chance that you can get killed here. But that's why we have a new strat now. So, I'll show, maybe, actually, I can show the way we used to do it. Just to show, this is an option if you want to go faster, but basically what you would do is, uh, hopefully made a save there, you'd run around the right side, and you'd have to dodge these enemies in a very specific way to not get killed in the fog gate. But like I said, there's still a small chance that you could get killed, so 
You do this, and you bait out both of the attacks. And then you just go to the fog gate. I actually... Yeah, so... How fog gates actually work in this game... Is the enemies despawn behind it? At least I believe. So you can't really get hit through. But it's only on a frame-perfect swing from one of those guys that it can somehow catch you. When you're coming out of the fog gate. Like, it's a, an extremely small chance, but it is possible, and... Like, because it's possible, I was like, I, I don't really want to have a small chance of getting hit on run, so I came up with this other strat of doing this. It's, it's significantly slower, but um, it does work. So, basically, what you want to do first is kill this guy down here. I guess one thing to note, like, if I was doing a normal any percent right now, I actually would just do that strat. Like, if I if I was just doing a straight up any percent, I would I would just do that strat. Because it's, it's quite consistent. It is quite consistent, but it's not absolutely perfect, so. Okay, what we're going to do, come up here, and we're going to shoot this guy, um, or actually, we're going to we're gonna shoot the wall here to get him to turn around, and then we're going to poison him. So, so we're going to shoot the wall. He's going to turn around, we're going to put three poison arrows into him. This should work with the longbow, I believe. Here we go. So he's going to die. Two guys are going to start running at us, so now we're going to just run away. Uh, we're gonna come back here and you'll you'll notice see how they're loaded in now but once i get past a certain point they're just not loaded in anymore this is where we want to be and we just want to sit oh here for a second oh my god dude that's so shit that is so <laughs> yeah we're gonna sit shit. here for a second until these guys that start walking back a garbage. Oh wandering off thanks god. for the five gifted subs man yeah and so now we're gonna come back and we're gonna see this guy starts moving around and so all we need to do now is shoot him basically shoot him and now, and now that'll get him to start coming towards us, which is all we need. And then we can easily go into the fog gate after that. So we shot him and then I'm going to shoot this guy down here as well. And, uh, and maybe that guy in the center as well. There we go. And so that should aggro most of them. And that's kind of all the important ones. And then we can kind of just, uh, you know, run around the side here. Honestly, this strat does take a need a bit more like refining, but but look, we get an easy fog door, so yeah. And so we're actually um, I should have used a, a bright bug earlier, but I did not. So you want to use a bright bug on this fight and a, and a resin. This this fight is definitely worth using a a bright bug on, I would say. But yeah, the the idea of this fight, you have to be careful of the hitboxes. But look, four hits into phase two, he actually should have transitioned there, but he didn't. Like, our damage is crazy. Maybe you don't even need a Bright Bug. I don't know. Like, I, I normally use one here, but I guess it's just unnecessary. But that's that's what I'm talking about, the damage of this thing. This weapon is so crazy. Um, Yeah, about that strat before the Fog Gate. Like, it definitely needs a little bit more refining, I think. It's still brand new, and I haven't actually used it in a, in a run yet. But, um, yeah, that's kind of the idea of it. Like, you can kind of mess around with stuff, like, test out, like, shooting different guys to see what works. I honestly don't know. Like, it's a brand new strat, so. But, yeah, the whole idea is that you clear the guys away from the front of the fog gate, and, uh, and then you can run into it without having a chance of getting hit from behind, so. I'll do it again here. Um, I'll actually use the bright bug this time, I guess. But I guess you just don't even need it. I don't know. The reason you kill this guy, by the way, is because he rings the bell, which causes a bunch of mages to spawn here. So that's why we do that. We're going to run up to the one past the torch here. Shoot the wall. Get him to turn around. Here we go. Three arrows, three poison. I guess another thing that I maybe people don't know about DS2 is that RTSR does affect poison buildup. So having RTSR on while, like, on a normal resistant like poison resistant enemy like so these guys for example with rtsr it's three shots but without it's it's uh it's four so that's um i guess something to know yeah exactly we just need room to enter the fog gate so and i guess where would you use the bright bug probably maybe right after you shoot this guy i guess makes sense shoot him
Wait, what is he doing, actually? That's interesting. Oh, there we go. Okay, he, he kind of just didn't know what to do for a second there. Yeah, I, I was thinking running down the middle like this should be totally safe. So, like, you could even do that. Maybe that's what I'd be doing on an actual run. And, like, we got plenty of time to get in here, so... I even had to had time to go into my menu and stuff, so... Yep. Lots of time. It's a good strat, but I, I would just maybe practice that a bit more. Look at this damage. This attack, I like to roll through it, and he has a high chance of doing this follow-up, which you can punish a bunch of times. And, yeah, look at this. Like, look at our damage. Absolutely just wild. Yeah, this boss, the way I fight him is, uh, I guess I'll show it a little bit here. The way I fight him is without spaces. So, like these attack, outspace it, um, and you can go in for a sprint attack. The, the one where he backsteps, you can just strafe it to the side like this. And then, if you're in this position, he'll often do that, like, kind of side swipe I was talking about. This attack only is in phase two, so I guess, I don't know. Yeah, this... Sprint attack, and then get out, and out space again, basically. This. And you want to make, like, he does have follow-ups to all these, like, all these attacks. But if you're out spacing them, like, and have enough room, you won't do the follow-up, so. Yeah. All right, out space, go for a sprint attack here. That's how I fight this boss. He's, and he's very easy. He's got, you know, when we have this much damage on him, it's no problem. So, yeah, that's that's how I fight him. It's just outspacing stuff, and it, it, it's very straightforward. But it, it, you know, you have you have to get used to his hitbox a little bit, maybe. Um. So yeah, I just do that, and then you can strafe to the right side on that big poke attack and uh, do exactly what I did, like bait out that slam, like I showed. So. Okay, next we are going to. We could actually buy more bright bugs here. How many do we have? We have two or three, so there are more bright bugs available here. Um, so maybe we could have used more on this run. I don't know. Like, I actually normally wouldn't go back to Majula at all, and I wouldn't use I wouldn't use a bright bug on Giant Lord is how I normally do uh, any percent. But if you wanted to go back and buy more and use it on more bosses, then that's an option. So yeah, we're gonna go to uh, Guardian Dragon. Uh, we're gonna get the King's Ring on. Are ready to set up RT Sargon. Bright bugs increase your damage and resistance, I guess, by, I believe it's 20%. So it's a significant increase in damage. Open the door, and then while this is happening, I just set up RT Sargon here. And you can actually do, once you can actually wield this effectively, you can do a setup where you do a sprint attack and then just do uh, an R1. And then I'll get your poison set up, so. It's a bit faster, I guess. So yeah, I wouldn't say there's anything too crazy on this run to this point, right? Like, the fact that we removed that strat for the, the Belsat Fog Gate, that's probably the biggest thing. Maybe just the jumps, right? The jumps in the, in the gutter are the most difficult thing, but it's early in the run, and they're really not hard at all. So yeah, this invader, you just sprint past, just like you would in Scholar. Except the difference in vanilla, this dragon, this bone dragon thing actually like dies or whatever. So you can just uh, just jump over here and just keep going. And the invader does get sent home much earlier. So just run up here. But yeah, there's a jump that I'm going to do in the in the dragon area that might be a little bit sketchy for people. Um, but I don't know. See when we get there. Honestly, I don't really know getting around the other way. Or like without doing the little jump or the skip. I don't think it's too complicated, but I don't know. We'll see when we get there. Um, this fight, this fight has a lot to actually like this fight is pretty specific. So first of all, here I'm gonna I'm gonna resin here. Like you can walk to the side of the door and just resin. And then this next one I'm gonna bright bug on. Right, so just walk to the right of the door frame and just you won't get hit here. Spray bug. Yeah, this fight is quite specific, so I'll do it and um Yeah, we'll see. 
I don't remember the exact punish I did, but I believe it's two R1s here. So you want to get R1, R1. So I was actually a bit slow there, probably. But he's going to do... going to do this. You can actually get an extra hit here. He's going to bite. This is what you do on the non-good RNG, by the way. And then he's dead. So... That, that was a good demonstration of what, what to do if, if you don't get what we're trying to get, which is not that. Hopefully I made a save. I really hope I made a save there. I think I did. Yeah, very easy fight. Um, when you can get these like kind of scripted kills on him. Yeah, so the idea of that one is when I don't get it, and I'll show like, I'll show what I mean by not getting it. Like, <laughs> um, like actually, I feel like I would normally do just an R two here, but I'll try R ones. Like, I can't remember if R R ones are too slow for this. Like, you kind of want to angle your hits here. Okay, here we go. See, so he's going to turn, and we can just spam him, because his AI just wants him to turn. Uh, there we go. That's what, that's what we want. So, you'll see, um, like, you know, we kind of sat there, and then he turned, like, 45 degrees, and then he will always do either a single bite or a double bite after that, and with this weapon, it doesn't matter which one, because we have so much damage. It doesn't matter if he does a single or a double, you can just kill him right there. So... Um, yeah, if, I mean, if you, like, don't get the kill there, then you can just, like, bait out foot stomps and then start fighting him normally. But, yeah, that's what we're looking for. So you want to angle those hits at the start a bit. And that's what I didn't do on the first one. And, uh, yeah, if, if, you know, if you do it incorrectly, and, the, like, I guess there's a slight chance that he just flies back anyways. But, yeah, if you, if you do it incorrectly, you're not in the right spot, he's going to fly back and do what happened on the first kill. And that's, like, the backup strat. So, yeah, two hits here. Right? He's going to angle. And you just spam. And see, he's doing the bite right now. Oh, wow. That is some meme HP. Maybe uh, maybe you do two R2s at the end, I guess. But yeah, that was the single bite, so we actually missed a counter, I believe. But yeah, so that's what we're looking for. This is definitely worth learning. It works on every run. Um, it's just that, you know, you might not be able to kill him, but you can get a big chunk of his health down. Like, even on a run like SO1, no, no upgrades, you're going to get most of his health down the strat and it works a bit differently with different weapons like to move to the right spot but with this with this weapon it's very easy because it's got a lot of range right so we're actually on that fight actually i hit his wing so you see the first hit did like 500 and then the next one did like 800 that's why headshots do more damage but yeah we'll do the exact same thing here he did the double bite and that's it so that's like the backup strat basically you do a head hit you roll if he does the bite which he will most of the time, if not all the time. And you do the rest of the punish. I'll, I, I guess I'll show this fight... Um, like, what you would want to do if, if you get out of the... Like, this kind of the scripted stuff. Out of the preparation, I guess. Like, the way you want to fight this guy is try to stay at his feet. And bait out the foot stomp attacks. And if, you know... If you're not, if if you don't get a footstep stomp and he starts flying, you just need to know what attack he's doing, right? If he's doing like the big AOE fire or... I should also note, I like to stand at the shadow here. Yeah, but I did get it again, so... So it's just, you know, we got less damage on this. So see, he's doing, he did a single bite that time. What you do is, you know, very high chance he does a foot stomp there. He didn't. Um, and he's doing the AOE fire breath, so you just run away. On this one... And we're going to get, once he's done it, get, try to get back in front of him. That's just the fireball. Run to the side on that. We want to be, like, try to get in front of him. So this this actually does have hitbox. He's flying and he's going to go, like, grab onto the side. Just run underneath him. Like, you know, just to the side, maybe. You can actually get an arrow off during this, too, if you want. Maybe two. And now we're going to get back to his feet. So we can get a couple hits. Also, his tail does have a hitbox during that. Get two hits and we're at his feet again. We want to get the stomps. We don't get it. He's doing AOE again. Just get out. Like, it's not a hard fight. You just need to know what to do. Like, it's not, like, reaction-based or anything. You just need to know what to do in certain situations. What is he doing? Okay, he wanted to bite. See? Like, he's he's biting here, so... Punish that. I want to I wanna show a foot stomp what to do. So, foot stomp, you just come to the other foot, and you get your hits in. And then you just, you know... Just like this. And he'll do the foot stomps a lot. Like, he'll just loop it. So, okay, this is just flying. You can get to his face. You can try to bait out a bite or something. That, again, has a hitbox. He's going to grab on. 
And just run underneath him again. Get an arrow in there. Maybe. Just like sit here. Make sure you don't go under his tail and go to his foot. Get a couple hits off. Kind of just cycle this. And kind of the big attack that we're looking for is... Okay, so this bomb or the projectile again. What the attack that we're looking for the most... So he's going to bite here, I guess. Like, bite, bites are good, but we're also looking for... He's got, like, this really, uh... Will he do it? Oh, here it is. Okay, so he's got this attack as well. This attack is a free kill every time. Right, look at how long this is. That's a free kill every time with this amount of damage, so... That's another good attack. Um, and that, that's literally all of his attacks, I think, right there. So... Yeah, pretty, uh, like, it, it's a little bit more execution based on that fight to get, like, a perfect fight. But even if you get out of the, you know, the preparation stuff, the scripted stuff, then it's not a big deal. You just have to survive. He's really not a hard boss. Okay, so now we have to go and get the Ashen Mist Heart, I believe it's called. Um, so that we can go into Giant Lord. And this is where this jump is coming up. So maybe maybe I'll like try to show a different way of doing this. I, I I honestly don't know because I always do this jump. Um I guess a no death. No death all NG to NG plus seven. I didn't do this, but it's a bit different than no hit, but. Um You can go get the feather there if you want, but I just dark sign, so. You just talk to her and Again, you don't actually have to go through all the dialogue. You, like, you can just queue up the dialogue and then just run away and you'll get it. So, it's a common thing you can do in this game. So, yeah, we're going to run through here. And this is this area's worse, obviously, in vanilla because you can't just take the ladder up to the zip line. In vanilla, you actually have to go through the area instead of just skipping it all. So, so yeah, this guy, hug the left side and then cut across. Go around him. And we're going to go into this cave here. Now here's where the jump is. So I do this jump on every run and it's really easy, but I mean, I can, like if you don't have baby jump mod, like don't, do not do this, right? Cause you could easily mess it up. But literally all it is, is you just jump to there, right? So this skips basically having to run all the way around to the top part of this, a significant amount of time. Um, so yeah, you, like, I mean, you can line it up with the bow, right? Just like aiming at the rock and jump across it's so easy to do um it's so easy to do like i don't know i i do it on every run but i guess if you don't want to do it um i can show the like the way there's just there's a dragon basically that i don't really i don't really know what the option is for him but yeah you just kind of run around I'll, I'll show what it is but if i remember the enemy placements like, I, I believe you can jump over him or something, like... I think it's actually more dangerous to not do the jump, basically, is what I'm saying. So, you just go this way. You can just dodge past these guys. Run past them, I mean. I want to get Cat Ring on, too, I think. Yeah, again, I do not go this way on no hit, so... Again, I don't know anybody who does, actually, because very few people run Vanilla at this point, so... I mean, maybe there's a good strat for this. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, you just run back here. I think you would want to kill this guy, probably. And you know what you even could do? You could actually just kill this guy if you wanted. You could just, you could just fucking snipe him for a while, but... I mean... I don't think with full health you'd survive a full drop down here. Like so I, I don't honestly I don't know if you can just run past him safely or if you'd like fire breath you. I think you'd probably run past him safely. I don't know. I guess if if I was doing that, I would probably kill him. But then yeah, now we're back. Like the jump takes you to right here. 
takes you right there, right? So, so that's what it that's what it prevents you from having to do. You could kill him, I think. Like, you could maybe poison him and uh, do it like that, I guess. It just might take some time. I, I I'm really not sure. But yeah, killing him, of course, would be an option. So maybe it's just that, I guess. Or you could run past him. Maybe running past him is consistent like that. I, I just, I don't know. I, I, like I said, I haven't done a no hit where I haven't done this jump. So. Oh, I did not mean to do that. The insane guard break. I meant to shoot him. But yeah, I would recommend doing the jump. Like, just make sure you have baby jump mod and just do that. I do want to try killing him just to see how long it takes though. I'll just I'll shoot him a few times just to see, but But yeah, would highly recommend learning how to do the jump and it's it's again, it's so easy to do and uh Yeah. Like it's not it's not really something that you're going to miss, I don't think, unless you're just like super nervous, which you could be because this is near the end of the run. So I like I don't know. Okay, let's see how much damage we do here. This is, so these are poison arrows. You can poison them. You shouldn't be able to hit you from here. Um, and I guess our damage isn't too bad. So you could do this, right? And you should, like, fly around, I think, but... Like, he'll, he'll do this. But, yeah. I wonder if the headshots do more damage to him. Probably. Let's see. So that did 347. Oh, it totally does. 231? Oh, so you can go for headshots, I guess. Like, yeah, you could kill him. I mean, I don't see why not. It doesn't actually take as long as I thought it would, so... Yeah, you could kill him, I guess. But I would recommend jumping, but you could do this. This works. This totally works. So, that's cool. Um, okay, so now... Uh, usually just roll across this bridge. It's kind of the fastest way to get across it. Okay, so the way to do this part is the first two guys you don't have to worry about. Like, this part is quite different than on Scholar. So just run across here. Uh, go to the left side of this guy, like our left side, and he just won't hit you with anything like this and then they they will not chase you past here so not a problem now you're gonna want to come to here and and stay here so this the mage guy here like you'll see he just shot a projectile and it's a huge aoe right it's massive these guys aren't there on scholar as far as i know but what you want to do is shoot him you want to kill him basically so you want to wait for him to shoot and he, they shoot very like infrequently and yeah, you just want to snipe him. So, in this case, he's up here. So, I'm going to come up to the top of the stairs and snipe him. If I could ever hit him. There we go. So, yeah, if he's, if he's like, onto the right side, you just come to the top of these stairs and shoot him. And then if he shoots, you can go back down here. Um, a lot of the time, he'll be just in the center. So, you can just come down these stairs and shoot him from here. That's usually way easier, but... Yeah, so you can do that. Now, these guys, we're going to kill them. There's a way to run past them, but I wouldn't recommend doing it. Unless you want to be fast. Like, yeah, if you want to be fast, you can run through this whole section, and it's it's actually consistent. Way more consistent than it would be on Scholar because of the, the knights at the end, which I'll show. But, um, yeah, you can kill these guys. Um, you can use the poison throwing knives if you want. Um... Like, you could do that, or you can just, you know, our damage should be high enough where it's kind of fine to just keep shooting at them. And, yeah, you'll want to kind of sit down here, right? And then if they start attacking, you just, you know, go further down. They won't really chase you down here unless, unless you're, like, too high up on the stairs. So, yeah, you could use poison for this, too. Like, there are a lot of guys. Like, this is very slow, this section. Um... Slower than on Scholar, to be fair. Uh, but yeah. 
Like, you can just kill them all, and that's probably what I would recommend. And there is a way to sprint through here, and I, I guess I can show it, but it's just, like, I wouldn't recommend doing it. So this is a magic attack. I'm just going to go down. You shot a magic project projectile there. But, yeah, there's no uh, dragon knights here, so. Until this part, I guess. And I guess this this is actually where Stone Ring would be the most useful in the run, probably. But again, very unnecessary. So yeah, we're gonna kill these guys, these guys here. I have, I have 14 poison. I like to use my poison on the NPC guys up here. But you only need three per each. I guess at the minimum though. Like if they dodge it, you'll need more, so. But yeah, I guess like they're, you know, you could use poison on Throne Duo, but it's actually quite unnecessary with the plus seven longbow. So, yeah, I mean, you could use poison on these guys, too, if you wanted. Like, you can kind of determine where you want to use poison. I would absolutely recommend it on the NPC guys, though. And, yeah, again, well, they, they just, they can't walk past this door, so you can just, like, sit in here. Now, these guys are a little bit trickier. So, yeah, like I said, we're going to use poison on them. So, uh, three shots to get poison. So, just shoot one on the right, or on the left, doesn't matter. So, we got poison off. Now, I'm going to keep shooting them as they come down here. We actually got a headshot there. And again. So, I'm probably going to kill him before he gets down to me, actually. Yeah, I mean, that's so easy. But if if they do start to get down to the lower stairs, what you can do is just run all the way back. I'll show it here. I'll show it with this guy. So, yeah. So, poison him. So, he rolled that one. So, it's going to take another one. There we go. So say I accidentally let this guy, you know, get down too low or something. Like, with this much damage, it's probably hard to have to have that happen. But you can just run back here. And they will not walk past this door as long as you don't keep attacking them. Right? So he's going to turn around and he's going to he's gonna go all the way back to his, his initial position. Right? And then we can do this again. Like, if you kept shooting him, he would chase you through here. But, yeah, he shouldn't, uh, he shouldn't keep chasing you through there, so... Yeah, if you have, like, lower damage or if you, like, miss a lot of shots or something, this is what you can do and you'll just go back. It's, it's handy to know. All right, and then now these are the last two guys. Just shoot this one from here. and Yeah, dark, dark arrows do a little bit more damage here, but it's, it's not worth actually spending the time to go get them. Yeah, as you can see, compared to Scholar, there's a lot more enemies to kill here. Also, these guys at the bottom of the stairs are going to turn around and just shield. So. Even though they have massive shields, they're not very resistant. They're not very good at absorbing my arrows, so. I don't know why I'm coming up here. I wouldn't normally do this, but. Yeah, just kill these guys. And there's one last guy. You actually don't have to kill him. Um, it's an NPC guy. And this is, if you're going to sprint through this area, it's actually the only enemy you have to dodge, which sounds kind of weird. And I, I, I didn't really make a save earlier, so I'm, I'm not sure if I, I should show, maybe I can show it, I guess. But this guy, you can kind of just aggro him. Like, you could kill him if you wanted to. Like, you could, like, headshot him. I, I don't know if that same thing applies where he doesn't run past the surge, but usually I just aggro him and then kind of just run around him like this. And you'll see, like, the reason is way more consistent to sprint through this area versus scholars because there's only one knight at the end here. Right, and this guy, this guy shouldn't chase you into here, but he absolutely can. So you have to watch out for that. So like, if he does, just, you know, get the, talk to this dude, get the mist heart, and just like run around and, and bone. Like, make sure you're at a safe spot where you can bone. Um, obviously, if he doesn't chase, it doesn't matter, but. I kind of want to try sprinting through just to show what it would look like, maybe. I wouldn't recommend doing it for most people, but. I just, I don't really have a great save for this, I don't think. Um, but yeah, and then and then after this, there's only three more bosses, and it's basically no no running sections. Like there's a little part before Giant Lord, but maybe I'll show the skip again. How about that? Load up that save instead or the jump or whatever.
So we're at 125 right now, and obviously this is I'm doing a tutorial on this run. But yeah, this this run is it's pretty fast. It is pretty quick. Oh my god. The one before that. It's very quick. Like I said, you can get like a, a 110 probably with this route, like doing all the safe strats included. And if you're gonna like sprint through this section and like do all the jumps, like you can get like an hour probably. If you're going really fast. To get faster than an hour, you'd have to start doing some other stuff, but, it, and you can, like, it's, it's definitely possible. Sudo's done less than an hour. You did like a 56 or seven minute run or something. So definitely doable, but yeah, you just like, it's so easy. Just jump. I mean, I would just run vanilla to be honest. Like there's no, there's no advantage to running scholar like at all, really. If you want to deal with like forlorns and stuff and have slower run. I probably should have made a save, but. Let me make one here. So yeah, if I was sprinting through and I wanted to go fast. Okay, here's the other position that this guy can be in. And he did get his projectile off, so I'm just going to come up here. Make a collide with the thing. Uh, yeah, sprint through here. You just kind of go around the side here. He's doing magic. Should miss you. I I probably would... I would kill those guys. Even if you want to sprint through this last part, I'd probably still kill those guys. But, yeah, how this works is you come around the side here. You can just roll this guy. You actually don't really have to but yeah and then you you regen stamina you run through the middle and then you have to dodge this guy it's the only guy you have to dodge right and that and that's it that's the whole thing that's sprinting through here but dodging that last guy like he does have some pretty quick attacks so that's why i wouldn't recommend it but it's literally one guy you have to dodge also you can do you can do a trick here with the bone similar to like popping a soul uh while you're in a like a boss soul while you're talking to a merchant it's the exact same inputs a and then X, and then you can use it with the bone. But just make sure you don't accidentally, like, miss the, the dialogue, so... Because then you have to, like, run all the way back, so... Okay, and now we are going to uh, Giant Lord, so... Let's go here. Um, and yeah, make sure you don't have Cat Ring on. There's, there's a skip you can do up here. I mean, should I show it, I guess? I haven't done it in a long time. I guess I can show it. I I don't do it, ever. Like, unless I was really trying to go fast, but you can, I guess you can, so you can, um, actually, I guess you don't even have to kill the guy. How it works is, um, you wanna be below a certain weight percentage, and you want to come here. I should probably make a save. And you wanna do, what is my gesture key, dude? I don't even know. <laughs> I literally have no idea what my gesture key is. It's not my back button because, I, like, as I said earlier, I have it binded to, uh, to my auto, uh, run. Dude, what is my gesture button? I don't even know. Where even is it? Usually I have it as G, but it's not G. What even is it, man? T? Oh, it's T. It's T. Okay. So what you do is... Um, yeah, you like go up against this, turn around, and you do a gesture. And then you, you backstep. So... And you have to do a gesture. You can't just backstep. Like, you won't get up. And then you also need to time the backstep properly. Like, if you wait too long on this gesture, like, you won't get up. Right? So you... Uh, you do that. And then I usually do this with keyboard, but... And my mouse sensitivity is way off. But you just, like, aim kind of anywhere in here, basically, and then you just backstep and then do a jump. I don't know what my jump key is, but... Okay. And then you just jump, right? So that's how you can skip having to go around here. I would not recommend doing this. Like, I don't really think there's a point. It just saves a bit of time, right? So if you want to be a bit faster, you can. And it is really easy to do, but it's harder than the other jumps, probably. Um, so, yeah, you skip opening the door. The way you would set up RTSR doing it this way is... Uh, with the fire that's in this boss. There is like some fire on the ground, which doesn't count as a hit. So you can just like stand in the fire for a second. 
So you could do it that way. Um, I'll show the way that I usually do it. Like, I usually don't bother doing that jump, especially since Giant Lord's usually late in a run. It's like, you know, doing an all bosses run is like trying to save like a few seconds trying to do a jump. Like, it's just not really worth it, I don't think. Again, unless you're trying to go fast. Like a no at speed run or something. Or if you just don't mind doing that jump. So yeah, the, the normal way is you just drop down here and this will be a perfect R2 star setup. And uh, you can snipe these guys, I guess. Like you can just bow them. Or you can melee them, it doesn't really matter. And that's it, like that's the whole thing. So you're avoiding this by doing that jump. So I just, I showed that it's a possibility to do it. It's more worth doing it in Scholar actually because there's more annoying enemies down here and also you could get a Forlorn. So on Scholar, it's actually way more worth it, but in this, Hardly worth it, I would say. <clears throat> but it does save, I mean, it probably saves what, like 30 seconds maybe, 20 seconds, I don't know. I realize it's getting dark out now. At least we're almost done the run. Okay, so we go in here. Uh, the way I do this now, I'll show two ways of doing this maybe. Except, uh, I'll show two ways of doing this. The first way to do it is, this is what I normally do, is I just run, I just run to the left here, and then you kind of like just touch the wall for a second, and then come over here. So what, what that's going to cause is the, the boulder to start rolling, and then one of these giants is likely to survive, like this close one, so you could poison him. You can poison him, and then he'll probably die to the, the, the AoEs that are happening here, right? But, like, he'll get stuck, and you just, you just kind of snipe him until he dies. This is what I normally do. Um, and then you can just go... And everybody's dead, right? So that's a decent way of doing it. You could also sprint through, but it's 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 not perfectly consistent. So this is, yeah, th this is what I normally do. Um, and then once you get to this point, you can just buff. You could actually run up there too, but... Just sit here, buff, and then once these, uh, once this goes by... You just go in. And I like to roll like horizontally with this attack, like this. And then I fight Giant Lord at his feet. A lot of people choose to fight him uh, like up on the platform, but I kind of have no issues fighting him down here. Like there are some weird memes that can happen. But yeah, you want to, you know, walk through his legs on this attack. Like he's literally got like three attacks that you have to worry about. This is this is the problem actually, right here, right? So he's, you get some camera memes, it's possible. But yeah, he's got he's got foot stomps on either side, and then he also does this like back swipe attack where you just walk through his legs, and that's literally the whole fight. Like that's it. Why this fight can be tricky is like there the camera, right? Like if you can't see what he's doing, that's a problem. And he also has like a glitch where he can like do some spins and like reposition himself. But that I've I, that's I think that's only ha ever happened to me one time. So yeah, the other way, honestly, I've never done it the other way that people do it, but I know some people do it with bow as well. Like, you go up on the platform on the left, and, uh, and you, like, kind of snipe him, I guess. My camera sensitivity is all messed up. And I'll show this other way of running through here. That's why I wanted to do this. Um, it would be a little bit tricky for, like, also trying to set up RTSR, I guess, maybe. But, like, you just kind of run through on the side. I, I wouldn't recommend doing this, probably. But you just run around. And, like, nobody should really aggro to you. And then the boulder will start rolling, so. Like, that's basically it. And you can run up to there as well. And I guess I can set up RTSR in this, uh... This flame here, too. Right, there we go. So you can do it this way as well. Um, which is what I would be doing on, like, a speed. But it's it's a little bit less consistent. is because the giant hitboxes are huge. Like, they're absolutely just massive hitboxes. So, but yeah, this is the platform I was talking about. So I, I know a lot of people... I don't know the timing of this. I'm probably going to die. But, like, a lot of people come up here and they just... They roll his attack. And they either shoot him with a bow. Or... Um, like go up and like hit him like I, I i don't really know how this works super well because i don't do this but yeah like you, you you know i guess you would use the bow here maybe these are attacks that i can't even punish 
I, I, I don't do this, basically. I think it's uh, unnecessary. But I know a lot of people do do this, so I don't know. You can. That's an option. Yeah, so... Yeah, see, he's, he puts a sword up. You just walk through his legs. Three hits. And then you look what he's doing again. He's doing it again. One thing you have to be careful of is getting too far to this side, which shouldn't normally happen. But, yeah, you don't want to start getting caught by the, the AoE there, right? So... But yeah, you, just, you literally just keep walking through. It's like every single attack he's done so far is the same attack. And he just keeps doing it. And he could do a foot stomp if you're at his foot. But like he just keeps doing the same attack. So. Yeah, that's how this fight goes. And then you could just dark shine immediately. Don't need any uh, kind of giant soul here. So that's that's the fight. Um, Yeah. And I, I, I do know a lot of people choose to fight him on that like balcony. And maybe that just avoids some of the, like, memes that I was talking about, like, camera and stuff, but... Yeah, you'll be totally fine if you just fight him on the ground. Just, you need to maybe prepare for some camera stuff, I guess. Okay, final two bosses here. Throne Duo, I mean, there's not a lot of hard bosses in this run, and Throne Duo isn't hard, but it's probably the hardest boss in the run, I would, I guess. Um, usually, people just go bow for the whole thing. Or, like, for the, at least, the killing watcher, which is actually, I normally do that as well. There's a little strat you can do, though, that I found out a while ago. That you can do to get some extra damage in phase one. I wouldn't recommend doing it, to be honest, on a run like this. I like doing it, uh, like, on my all bosses route from a long time ago. I, I used to do it because I could instantly kill the uh, throne watcher. But, yeah, like... It's, it, it'll speed up the fight a bit, and if you're doing it melee only, it's, or like mostly melee, then it's definitely faster, and it's good to do it, but I think for this, just, I would just use bow the whole thing, and uh, you have to get good at outspacing the attacks and knowing when you can punish and stuff. Like, you're basically just kiting them around the whole time. But I will, um, I will show this opener, I guess. So, I'll show this opener. How it works is you shoot two arrows at him at, at Throne Defender. And... Or, sorry, Throne Watcher. I don't know. Okay, I messed this up. <laughs> I haven't done this in a long time, actually. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, you throw... Uh, you shoot two arrows at Throne Watcher. And, uh... I think... And then uh, you just like strafe around and get some hits in, I guess. I'll just, I, I'm just going to show it just to sh like, you know, demonstrate what you can do, but it's quite unnecessary. So yeah, Throne Watcher, two arrows right away. And then you would switch to your weapon and then you would roll through here. And then you can get, you know, two hits off and look at the damage, right? Like in this case, we get an immediate kill. So it is nice, like it is nice to do, and it does a lot of damage and stuff, but, it, you know, it's just, it's a bit risky, I guess. Also, when you're fighting this guy, you're, you want to rotate around this way. And, uh, like the best attack is the slam, but he can do like a shield poke, he can do the side swipe. He's also doing this where, yeah, so this is the overhead, you can get a few hits off. And look at our damage, man, it's just crazy. So yeah, you can do the strat to save you some time. Like, I'd recommend practicing. And, he, of course, he goes to revive. And these are all counter hits, so it's no problem. Um, so, yeah, you can do that. That was actually great RNG, where I um, I was able to get the kill on Watcher immediately because Defender backed off, and then also Watcher went immediately to buff. Right? So, that's, like, best scenario, where I could easily get the kill. Probably most of the time, you won't be able to get the kill. Um, but it'll still speed up phase one a lot, right? Or like the the bow section. I'll do it again. So two shots. Run in here. Actually kind of messes up this time. But yeah, that's that's the idea basically. Um I, I did mess it up right there, but you want to roll the defender's attack. 
Um, yeah, because one of them can clip you, so... If, if you are doing that strat, you want to roll the defender attack, but you don't want to get, like, sent that far. And I kind of just... I, I was going to strafe it, but then I realized it wasn't safe, so I rolled. So it put me way too far. Um, but yeah, um, you can do that. But again, I probably... Like, it's, it's, it's kind of unnecessary, unless you're looking to go faster, I think. So let me show this one more time properly. Actually, this is really weird RNG here. Still works though, right? You strafe, you go underneath. And I didn't even get two hits off there, but yeah, so how this fight works on melee um, is not like that. Or on, on range, I mean. Okay, and I gotta hurry up and finish this run before it gets dark, dude, because I, I don't wanna go turn on my light. This has been a long tutorial, but I guess my DS3 one was also this long, probably so. Um, yeah, so I'll show this fight how uh, you would do it all archery, and it's really straightforward. You just outspace attacks, um, and uh, yeah, you just go for shots here. And you can use poison too if you want, but I don't. I actually don't think on longboats there's even a point because the damage is so high anyways. Okay, so you can go for like three hits right away here. And then again, outspacing this, and you have to determine whether it's safe to shoot or not, and there it was because the defender wasn't really doing anything. Like you can bait out an attack in here, like, you know, I'm looking for the shot. Baiting in an attack from the defender. You want to start with Watcher. Right, so I outspace. Backstep I can punish. It's probably going to hit the shield though. Buff I can also punish. And I'm noticing defender's not doing anything. So I can just go for more. You know, outspace. Defender's not doing anything. I go for punish. Right, like. That's basically what you're cycling here. Like you're waiting for Watcher to be vulnerable. And then... And then you checking if defender's doing anything, and if he's and if he's like idling and he's not going to come and attack you, and you attack. And it's the same idea if you're going to do this fight melee only as well. I guess I should add, but yeah, just outspace. This is safe. I guess one thing to note though is the longbow is slower than like the shortbow, for example. Wow, he blocked that. Yeah. Also, don't fall off the edges. That that is something that is something to worry about. All right, so their defender came and like started attacking, so it wasn't safe, but now we get the kill, and then we just do the same thing. We just one-on-one -on -one this guy. Get that slam, we can punish that really easily. Yeah, I'd like to go this way. You can strafe under like all, literally all of his attacks. Maybe just the poke I wouldn't strafe, like this one. But uh, yeah, like just strafe around him. Now he's going to revive, and it's just GG. Okay, now for Nishandra, the final boss. Nishandra's really easy, and RNG really affects this boss, actually. Like, this boss can be can go a number of different ways. I obviously, I, I prefer when it's like a faster melee fight, but sometimes she just sits at range, and uh, I actually, I kind of didn't show a trick that you could do there, but you can actually shoot an arrow before the cutscene, like, you can just aim an arrow at where she's going to spawn in. And uh, it'll shoot. I guess it's such a minor detail, but... You basically just queue it up before the cutscene, I guess. <clears throat> and you don't even have to release it. Like, the cutscene will release it for you. So, you just aim, like, right at the front of the boss arena. Like, right right where she spawns there. You just, like, aim and charge up a shot. Okay, so yeah, she's going to do... She's going to do her orbs here. It's important to, like, force her to do them. Like, you don't want to, like, run away. Because she'll move up and then do the orbs. So you want to like just kind of sit still until she starts casting it. And so yeah, what you what you're going to want to do is just keep shooting her until she gets close basically, right? So like, you know, shoot her. Um you can walk to the side of that laser. Hopefully she does the other laser. So this is the this the horizontal one or the the vertical one I mean. Just keep shooting her. And like we have re like relatively good bow damage, so I also could use the bright bug. Okay, this is the horizontal one. You could do this. Check this out. So you can actually shoot her um, during that laser to cause her to stagger, and so she's doing it again. And she'll like shoot the laser over your head. And I found out that you can do this a long time ago. It's really cool. It's a really cool trick you could do to not have to roll it, or you can just roll it. Okay, we're getting a bit of everything. So now she's gonna come up here. She'll normally open with this. You just strafe around it. Um, this attack, you just strafe to the left and keep strafing. And, this, and then, there it is. So this is the AOE attack. Just get away. You want to be careful of not walking into the orbs, right? So these orbs, um, they do they deal damage and it counts as a hit. So this attack, you just roll and then 
you know, strafe. And that there could be a follow-up there. Again, you just strafe. Strafe to the side there. This is why I frame. So, so here she's going to cast another orb. So when she just kind of sits there and idles for a second, she's going to cast more orbs. And you got to get out, right? Because I'll, I'll show the damage they deal. Right? So see, I start taking damage, start taking curse. Like, that is a hit. So when she casts orbs, you want to go to the other corner and just, you know, do do arrows if, if she's going to do this, right? Just more arrows. Get back to the corner. So she's doing the side one again. And yeah, you can roll this. But usually when I'm doing runs like SL1 or I have like base agility or something, like I'm gonna I I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot it, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot the arrow there. Just you gotta make sure to time it right. Like if you're actually gonna do this, just make sure to time it right. And it's dependent on distance a little bit as well, so. But yeah, you can get Nishandra fights. Like, first of all, I didn't bright bug here, which I should have. And you do that before the cutscene. You can get Nishandra fights that are all range. You can get her that she like walks up to you immediately, right? I, I like I said, I prefer when she walks up to you immediately, but this is AoE. Just make sure you're not running into orbs. Look at that fist damage. She's actually casting more orbs here. Right, so you can kind of see what I mean by her just like sitting there doing nothing. You can actually punish her when she's doing that. And uh, and like get a couple hits off and then get out. Before the orbs come. So this is the horizontal one again. But that was really close actually. Just shot that maybe a little uh, early. But yeah, that's Nishandra. Nishandra is really easy. I want to show more of her moveset though and how to strafe stuff. Because I see, I see a lot of people fighting her in a really awkward way with like rolls and stuff. Like, you don't, you, you basically, you only have to roll a few attacks on this boss. So again, strafe this one. When you're in front of her, you get, you get your punish in. You just this one, you just rotate to the left. Just keep walking left. This one, you roll into and then walk right, and you'll strafe it, and you can get two to three hits off. This one again, left, just left. Roll that one. So she's like, it's actually, it's, it's fun to fight Nishandra actually. Like, I don't know when she comes up and does melee, like some of the strafes are pretty cool, I guess, but there's like one thing she hasn't done. Okay. She's gonna, she's gonna do orbs again here. There's one more strafe I want to show, I guess, but all the strafes are the exact same idea where you, um, you kind of just rotate. And keep rotating in the same direction. She's not really giving it to me, though. She keeps giving me these ones. <clears throat> There's one more attack she can do. Literally one more. And she's not doing it. Come on. Come on. You gotta do it. Wow, she's really not doing it. It's like her most common attack, man. Why is she not doing it? Is it because I'm not punishing? Maybe? That's that's really weird. Interesting. Maybe it's because I'm not attacking. Like, I don't know. Now she's doing orbs again. Anyways, like, it's the same idea as all the other strafes. Like, I she did it earlier in the fight. She did do it earlier in the fight, but... Um, yeah. It was the one I said she didn't do a follow up on, basically. But yeah, that's that's how you that's how you do um you know vanilla no hit, dude. It's it's a really easy run. It's much, I would say it's much better than the scholar run probably. It's faster, no forlorns. You get the DLC keys right away. Uh, there's a lot less enemies to deal with. Like if you watch this versus like a, a scholar run, there's a lot less enemies to deal with. And this was a tutorial route that's that I did an hour thirty eight. I, like I said, this this route is like 110, and that's like that would be a slow run to get like a 110 to 115. That's like a slow a slow run for this route. So, so yeah, I mean, this is how like I I definitely would recommend running vanilla. Not a lot of people do at this point. Like, there's only like three people or four people who actually run vanilla out of all the DS2 runners. Most people run Scholar, but uh, yeah, like that's that's how you know it, vanilla, dude.